All right, hello, 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 hello. So doing another live stream here on the build that's gonna be kind of my template to make sure that uh, the build challenge Foxtrot is gonna work out. Did some uh, good work yesterday on it in the live stream. And we'll go ahead and we'll bring it up here. So here's the landing craft. Uh, making good progress with this. I wanna jump right in and get on the, working on some of the drive mechanism. So what I'm gonna do here is, I think I'm just gonna do some deletage. Go. Let's do that, and we'll keep that like that. All right. So what we're gonna do here is, of course, I didn't have symmetry on. Why would I do that? That would just be bright of me. Let's see. We'll do that. All right. And so what I'm gonna do here is, I want to start getting this ready for gearing. So I'm trying. Let's say we probably want maximum of a 27 to 1 gear ratio here. So these are running about one RPS. So let's say three gearbox should be fine. Three times three times three. There's gonna be 27, so. All right, and then this will just be our reverser. Copy that over there. So what I want to do is kind of do an equalizer here where this is going to smooth this out and essentially give us consistent RPS so we don't get surging. So this is kind of like a surge protector on here. And so let's kind of see how I want to do this. So one, two, three, that should be there. Okay. I'll grab modular clutch. And flywheel. See about a larger flywheel. The problem is the mass. These are heavy, 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 so I don't want to make them too heavy. Let's just do one by ones for now. Let's see if we can't get a double stack to work for us the way I want it to. Alright. I didn't grab this one. And so then we want to grab a clutch. I'm trying to decide if I need that clutch. I think I'm, uh, I don't know if I need it or not. I, I do. I'm trying to see how I would set this up. So essentially what I'm going to do is you get surging with the pistons. And so the thought is this, is we'll send them through some flywheels and we'll get the flywheels up are essentially, you know, conservation of momentum. Uh, yes, I changed that. Uh, that that was my project uh, for yesterday and uh, today. There, uh, Tripper. I uh, it was actually kind of neat. I um, you know I just took some pictures and hand edited the uh, the eyelash the eye whatever you call it <laughs> eyelids. And uh, so he blinks now. It was a pain because it wanted to uh, not do a transparent background. So I finally found a program like just literally five minutes ago that allows me to do the um, transparent background. So uh, I can put them over, overlay them on things. So uh, kind of cool. How's it going there, Boathouse 73? So what's going to happen here is the pistons are going to turn. They're going to go through a multiplication. Uh, There's a 27 to 1. So we'll usually get up to like 1 RPS, go 27 RPS max out. Uh, this is going to be PID controlled. And essentially what this is going to do is object at rest wants to stay at rest. Object in motion wants to stay at motion. So what this is going to be is surge protection. And this is going to spin up the flywheels. A PID is going to control the flywheels to give them consistent RPS. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be setting an RPS value with that. And then that clutch value is gonna come out and it's going to uh, go out through the reverser and into the propellers. And kind of, I'm um, trying to do a little bit of an elegant system to try to get uh, rid of the surge. You know, there are probably easier ways to do it, but I really don't care about easy. I kind of care about, you know, fun and kind of something interesting. So we'll try a surge protection system on this. And we'll see how this works. So the plan here is this. Those are 27, so I need to make a micro control year. Alright, and what are you? What did I make this? Oh, come on, dude. Clicking the wrong buttons here. 
Uh, what is this? This I started doing this. Uh, throttle? RPS? Yep. All right. I just already started making this. So what this is going to do is it's going to read the max RPS that I want. Uh, is that what I want? Okay. Um, so that's going to go throttle. Throttle goes up to a value of 1. It's going to then come down here, multiply by the max value. RPS is going to be writ uh, is going to be read here into the PID. Uh, P value, I need to control. Con speed and clutch. So let's see. Let's go clutch. And I'm going to run both engines at once until I kind of get going where I want. That's P value, and that's, where's throttle? Throttle is going to be the WS. Okay, let's make sure WS is sticky. It is. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and spawn this. Hopefully this will run the way I want it to. So. All right, we'll get that going. Oh, come on, man. Again, I hate how the editor has a different slow speed than the uh, than this does. And we're going to start with a p-value of 1 in there. All right, and then I'm going to go down and we... Yep, let's, again, which button is it? Control or shift? Like, if I'm in-game, it is control. If I'm in the editor, it's shift. So it makes it obnoxious that it has to be two different things. All right, so let's see. I don't think I turned these on. But they're running, okay. There we go, so we have motion. We're getting up to, okay, where are we at here? These are running at a RPS of one one. Okay, good, so we're up to an RPS of around 30. You see there's a little surge in there. And then that's showing zero because I have not put any throttle in. So as you can see, clutch pressure is a negative. That's fine. I should clamp that, but um, until I do that, it's not a big deal. You know, it's going to be in there anyways. It's just going to be clamped. You won't be able to see it. And so as I start to increase, I'm going to set a value. And now you notice it's not surging anymore. Before it was going surge, 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 surge. Uh, before it was jumping, so now it doesn't jump, and that's because what happens is when the PID goes over the set RPS that I put in there, it will automatically reduce the clutch. So it's like me manually reducing the clutch. Oh, I'm going too fast, reduce. And so I'm setting the desired RPS, and the system is taking care of it. So pretty good there. So as you can see, we're not surging, we're not jumping anymore. All right, good. So now as here we get smooth motion. Let's slow down a little bit. There we go. So as you can see, that's uh, working fine. And that took all of like 10 seconds to get figured out. So not too bad. I think a number of one will be good. I'll check chat in a second, guys. I'm just kind of trying not to get distracted too much while I'm uh, doing this thing because I don't want to uh, forget what I'm doing. So 19, I believe, is about 30 uh, meters per second. Uh, you can tell the you could tell the pitch of the propeller if you went ahead and did the math. But I'm not going to bother. Uh, let's go ahead and p-value is going to be 1. So let's go property p-value. So uh, I'll check chat in a second here. 1. So one works fine. That's going to be there. Okay, good. So let's update that. All right, let's check chat. Yeah, I, th I think he came up pretty good with the blinking eyes, so I thought that was fun to have him uh, sitting there with blinking eyes. Uh, if you go ahead, neat and alt, and check the live stream from yesterday, you'll uh, be able to see it. Yes, so it's a landing craft. Uh, likely what's going to happen is uh, Friday I will release the rules. Probably, you know, it'll be Saturday like midnight I'll release the rules. That way when I'm in bed and Europe gets up on their Saturday morning, they can start uh, working on the challenge, asking questions. So what will usually happen is about probably this Friday at midnight, also known as Saturday morning, uh, Eastern time, I will... 
uh, drop the rules. And you'll have until Sunday midnight to uh, put in it to request any changes. And so I have, if we look at the Discord, let me grab Discord here really quick. So if we grab the Discord, so where are we at here? Challenge. So we have, uh, oh, where is it? Challenge forum. All right, so let me bring that up. All right, so here, if you look at the uh, challenge forum under build challenges, uh, where are we at? Build challenge echo rules uh, discussion and clarification. So this is what I do every time is if we come up here, I start this. Uh, this is the rule clarification. So you can ask any questions you have here. All right. And then if you go to. Let me see where are we at here. So the rules will be in build challenge. Build challenge form is where I'm going to ask for this. I will lock the rules. Uh, where am I at here? Build challenge. So if we go up here to the beginning of it here, uh, this is the echo announcement that's in the uh, announcement channel. And so I announce it. During that open period, you go into forum and you ask for any rule clarifications or changes. If I realize a rule is not clear enough or if the uh, rule needs to be changed, you'll notice I'll annotate it. So right here, this one was changed. Um, you may repipe the, you, uh, here it is right here. You may remove the flywheel. Um, that was, I wasn't clear on that. Uh, you know, people asked if they could remove the flywheel. Yep. And it says the date. So it was 7 16 at 12 PM. So that way, if a rule is changed, you know, when once the clock strikes midnight on this Sunday, uh, rules are locked. I'm not changing them, you know, unless it's something really extreme, you know, something that, uh, really needs to be done. You know, I'll still clarify things, but I'm not going to make big changes, and that's because it's not fair to other people who may have already, you know, that might be their only weekend of work on it. They got their build done, and now they have to go back and open it back up again. So that's how this works. So it'll be announced Friday at uh, midnight. You'll be in the uh, in this build challenge announcement channel, and then you can go into the build challenge forum. I will make a post here. It will be the build challenge Foxtrot rules discussion and clarification. As you can see, this was quite lively. People went in here. They asked for a bunch of clarifications and for rules changes. And then, um, you know, so like somebody asked here and I answered there, that will go on. And then again, they're closed and locked at, um, you know, this Sunday at midnight. And there's going to be a two week challenge. So it'll be. We grab a calendar. We'll see what the date is going to be. So be like 0400 Zulu. So let's see. It will be the 19th. So it'll be the locked. Where are we at here? Uh, what is that? Is that two? So it'll be uh, Labor Day. So it will be... Um, Mid the stroke of midnight, the morning of the 4th of September. That's when it will be uh, locked. So that will be uh, that, or that will be, be when the challenge is over. You know, if people, like I said yesterday, if people are really struggling and need extra time, you know, always bring it up because I've done it before. I've changed times. Uh, so, um, you know, that's... Uh, it's not a problem, just need to know. If, if like one person is having a time constraint and everyone else is doing fine, I'm not probably gonna change it. If, you know, everybody's having a time issue, I'll change it, you know. Yep, so it's gonna be a landing craft. Uh, it's gonna have my boat, my, my boat, English language me speak. It's gonna have my, I should make a t-shirt like that. <laughs> truck on it. So it's gonna be this truck. So this one's already on the workshop. It's, this is a pretty small, well, it's, it's big for a pickup truck, but it is small in the grand scheme of things. So this is what it will be required to haul. So you can build it smaller than mine. I built mine bigger just so that I could theoretically carry larger stuff. You know, I'd act, and uh, because this is gonna be a steam challenge, you need a bunch of space for steam. As you can see, you know, I could get this more compact. I could use smaller pistons, but, um, you know, that's kind of the way of it, so. All right, so let's see where we're at. Let's, let me finish up some chat here. Uh, that's fine. 
Paddle steamers are fine. I can't imagine that being problematic. Yeah, it's just, uh, you're going to have to have a steam drive system. So, for example, I'm not going to allow you to do an electric drive. Uh, you have to do steam drive. So, it has to be steam, either turbine or piston turning, you know, giving you torque, essentially. You know, I don't want to make it so somebody's just doing steam to turn a generator to do the same electric stuff. That's easy peasy. You just run an electric motor. Let's see. So, yep. So, paddle steamer is fine. How's it going? Oofa taffy. Oh, I steal an Alfredo. I see that. Yep, the old Cracker Midnight. Yep, I think it'll be fun. How's it going there? Owl. All right, so this system's working well. As you can see, it took me all the two seconds to put this together. So, we're running... Essentially a 1.1 RPS through a 27-1 gear ratio going through. We have gearbox, gearbox, and then we're setting the RPS in there. All right, so what we want to do here is uh, further uh, work on this system here. So let's cut this and put it on the deck so that I can see what the hell I'm working on here. So the reason I'm building one is, one, I've been wanting a landing craft. Two, it also helps me iron out the rules, uh, what's possible, what's not possible. You know, and um, I think that's helpful. So let's go ahead in here. And what I want to do here is, so let's see. Let's get this logic going a little bit more precise here. So the throttle's here. And what we want to do is this. All right, so I'm going to make this function a little bit better here. So let's go... Clamp uh, x times y, comma, negative. Let's see, how many RPS backwards do we want? Probably a max of, oh, I don't know, maybe 10. And then, oh, yep, that's fine. Uh, negative 10, and then probably a maximum forward of, let's say, 30. All right, so that's going to clamp that out. All right. And what we want to do here is... Okay, so that's good there. And then what we want to do is take this... I don't really need it that big, but I already have that function. ABS. All right, and so what we're going to do is take the absolute value of X. What this is going to allow me to do is this is my reverser. So what's happening here is the throttle is coming in. Throttle can go negative 1. Throttle can go to a positive 1. It's going to be multiplied by a factor here of 19. That's going to give us a maximum RPS of 19 RPS. All right, so 1 times 19, either 19 forward or back. All right, this is, um, then it's going to go through a multiplication effect. So it's going through the, there, but we're going to set what our RPS is. So I don't want my propeller spinning like crazy backwards. So it's, we're going to limit it to uh, 10 RPS backwards, 30 RPS forward. Uh, I could ABS this. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing a separate ABS block, I'll show you in a second. But then we go into an ABS block. What this does is absolute value of X. So even if it's negative 10, this is going to read positive 10. Because we want the we want the flywheel to always be showing a positive value. All right, good. So that's going in there. That should be fine. Next thing we want to do is we want to put in our reverser. So I'm going to change. We already figured out the p-value. So p-value is now going to change to an on-off output. That's going to be reverse. All right. And so here's our reverser. So if this number here is less than zero, reverser. And this is why I don't just absolute this, is I need to know when this number is reversed. So whenever this goes in reverse, it's automatically going to click us into reverse. All right, we'll update that, and then we will duplicate. Out of there, you. All 
All right, and so this one will be hooked up to the starboard side. That will be the reverser on the starboard side. That will be the reverser on the port side. We have the throttle is going to be, uh, on this case, is going to be up down. And I think we're good. So let's go ahead and configure this, make sure this is running right. So WS, let's change this down to like a three. Sticky is fine. Up, down, three. Sticky. So this would be star drive. WS is going to be port drive. Port drive, sticky. All right. Spawn it, and we'll see what we can do for controlling here. Not a huge fan of the sound of this, but whatever. All right, so that's up, and so we should be spinning pretty quickly. I'll just give it a second. I'll check chat while that's spinning up. Hello, hello, Tackle and Hungarian. How are you? Thanks, thanks. I just finished him uh, like five minutes before I started the stream. I was pulling my hair out trying to get that done. It's... Um, it's easy to make a transparent picture. You just delete the background and, and save it as a PNG. I then tried putting it into DaVinci, and DaVinci automatically puts a background on it. And then I put it into Jiffy. Jiffy put a background on it. So then I used a, another website to remove the background. So it was kind of a process, but um, he now blinks. So I thought that was a fun detail. I can also make him enormous if you'd like while we wait for this to heat up. There he is, quite large now. We'll make him back to his normal size. But he gets to come with us on our adventures. Let me check where we're at here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with uh, securing. You know, the main thing is it's mostly a scale thing. So, you know... Um, Kind of the plan is going to be, you know, I'm going to spawn it with the truck on there. Uh, so you guys don't have to bother uh, putting the truck on there. I, I don't know. If, if Let's let's make the rule here. If, if you have a special securing system, go ahead and just um, go ahead and just have it on there. But, uh, you know, I can clarify that later. As long as it's not a pain for me to attach it, that's fine. You know, I'm just going to stick it on. And the plan is to do this. We're going to I'm going to spawn it here. I'm going to go around. I'm going to go to the beach, drop the ramp, or whatever system you have. Uh, landing craft have a ramp. You know, if somebody's craning things on, I don't know if that's necessarily a landing craft. That's kind of the point of a landing craft. So come around here and drop the ramp, drive off on the beach, bingo, done. You know, I, I'm going to do a walk around on the ship. I'm going to check things like the aesthetics of the ship. It, you know, it doesn't have to have, like, living quarters. It's going to be conditional. For example, if you have a big ship like the size of mine here, like, I have a room here that, you know, is likely going to have a little, maybe a kitchenette, a seating area, a little, you know, a sleeping room, a bathroom, uh, a little bit of an engineering section. If you have a tiny ship, like, you can make this small. You don't have to make it big. Uh, and it just has a small pilot house. Of course, you're not going to get ganked for not having a bedroom. There's no requirement for that. But it's going to be conditional. So, like, if you have a big ship like this and this room is just literally an empty box, you know, I might cut some aesthetics on that but if it's like a small ship with just a pilot house like even there are some cool ones that like just have this top section and then like a a archway that um this sits on top of that's fine just all i'm saying is don't have empty rooms that do nothing you know kind of you know like stuff in this this is fine but you know do a little decoration i'm gonna kind of look through that and again that will be worth points so but uh yeah so all right so we're up and running here so i'm gonna do ws uh W and up arrow at the same time. All right, now I'm going to start cutting back on S. We're going to go in reverse, make sure that works. There we go. So you can see that's instantly in a reverse. That's the nice thing with this system is this can, this switches into reverse uh, almost seamlessly because there's so much torque. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, uh, what do you call it, stall at the engine.
Okay, so I'm pushing this forward. All right, I'm pushing uh, W forward and I'm getting nothing, so I have to fix that. So I'm trying to put starboard in reverse. There's starboard in reverse. So I, I can't go forward for some reason. I'm gonna try going forward on both of them. So something's up with that, I need to look at it. There we go. Okay, they're going forward. I don't know why I didn't want to for a second there. All right, good. So let's uh, let's start putting some dials in here. I want to see what's going on with my engines or with my system here. So, and this way I can start to diagnose any issues and tweak it. So I want here is going to be piston RPS. This one is going to be uh, clutch. And let's do flywheel, RPS, I didn't mean to cut it, I meant to copy it, I always do that now. Alright good, and so let's get some of this data going so I know what's up, so whatever this clutch setting here is going to be is going to go to uh, Clutcha, apparently I typed in Clutcha, so it's now called Clutcha. There's Clutcha, 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 there's Clutcha. What are you, uh, Piston RPS. And then I want the Flywheel RPS. Piston RPS. And Flywheel RPS. Alright, so let's go and watch this and see what it's doing, and I want to see how it's behaving and tweak my numbers as necessary. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Yep, yep, so I'm, I'm good with modifying the truck. Just mostly, you know, it just needs to be a certain size and the weight, that's the main reason why I'm doing that. And by having it, something I've already released is just easy. I know, he does steal the show, Mr. Sue. He's off, he's off napping somewhere, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it'll be calm. Uh, might be, I might do like 10% wind or something. I'm not going crazy. That's not part, really part of the challenge is, you know, I might do a little bit of handling and put on like 10% wind, but it, it's not going to be a lot. Oh, let me, I gotta go start this here. Let's do this. Let's go ahead in here. And let's, uh, where are we at here? Let's take this. And put it in the bridge so I don't have to keep going down into the uh, into the bow to do this. All right. And so I thought this would be kind of a cool way to move some of my vehicles around the map, you know. There we go. That's up and going. And so once we get a piston RPS here, which is here, we'll we'll know that it's um, we're up and rolling. But it's going to be mostly calm. I might put ten here. Let me kick. I'll kick on the wind once we get out of the dock. But it's not going to be much. Uh, you know, maybe twenty-five at most. But it's a short it's a short trip, so it's not like I'm going out far and checking it. I just go like this. Like you know, it's mainly does do I spawn somebody's vehicle in and does it capsize in that short trip? If it capsizes on that short trip, you know, you're not going to do well in the points. If it makes it that short trip, good, 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 you know. Of course, you should be trying to make it so you can actually use it. So here we go. We have Piston RPS going. The clutch is trying to maintain whatever I've set in there, which is a zero. That's why it's negative, is because it's trying to make sure that it doesn't do a positive RPS. And then here's Flywheel RPS is not turning because the clutch is negative. So that's all good. 
Let's start to increase both sides. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and check them. So as you can see, the flywheel RPS is kind of all over the place, and that's because the surging is, of course, um, surging it. But you notice the clutch is moving at a much slower value, and so the clutch is smoothing it out. So that's what our that's what our ship would be doing here, if we if I didn't um, put that smoothing system on there. And I could reduce the p-value even more and probably cut that uh, that jumping as it is down to almost nothing. But you can kind of see this has a small. You notice how small the deviation is here, and that's because this is at a, this is only going like one RPS. This is then multiplied up to 27 times this, so it's going to be 27 times as bad as this. And then this is down here smoothing us out, so we're not surging the whole time. And I'm just using wing segments as rudders on uh, pivots. Which is kind of my preferred way for larger ships. Yes, I did. Yep, I, I didn't need the keypad anymore. The keypad was for uh, putting the p-value in on the PID. Alright, good. So we're doing well here. How's it going, um, Arike? You might as well. Yep, these rudders work well. I, I do this on most of my larger ships. Yeah, I put in uh, wing rudders like this. But the nice thing is, you know, with having asymmetrical thrust, and especially even with the, with these steam pistons, I can throw uh, starboard right in a reverse. So I'm holding down the down arrow. And we'll see if it's actually doing anything. There we go. And it, see how it kicks right in a reverse with a with a diesel that would have um, that would have stalled the engine out. And you notice, so now I'm doing asymmetrical thrust. My rudders are full forward. You know, this allows you to do much more maneuvering. So this is why I go a little bit more complicated on this, is I really want the maneuverability that um, asymmetrical thrust allows me. And then we'll go up on it. So we still have a little surging. I'm probably going to put that keypad back in just to uh, smooth that out a little bit. So let's do a couple things here for our next test. So, I actually, see, I deleted the p-value. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I did it anyway. Let's go back in here and put that back in. Let's go... I'm just making sure these aren't going to hit each other. They should be fine. Okay. Uh, compute. There we go. Number input, p-value. And then I'm just going to plug this p-value back in so that I can uh, get a little bit more accurate. So we're, at, we're kind of already at that point where we can do that. So My fermenting jar came today, so I'll be able to do some of that. It was supposed to come yesterday, it didn't. But, um, all right, so this is going in here. And then I want to do a dial. Uh, actually, I don't need a dial. I just need a linear speed. So, All right, linear speed. And then uh, what do I want here? What was I doing? Um, keypad. P-value, P-value. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a test. And so I just want to see the speed, and I want to get that surging down to as little as possible. So, all right. So we started up. Uh, our value we had was uh, one, so it's probably a little on the high end. I can go down. Yeah. So one thing to note with these wing rudders uh, is they are only effective up to 45 degrees. So you want to limit them. Uh, 0 0.5 neg and 0 0.5. negative uh, five. Once you go past, like if I go like this, I do not turn any faster. You know, so 45 is the fastest I'm going to turn. So you want to limit them to 45s, so that they only go 45 degree angles. 
All right, so we are up and running there. So there we go. And let's go ahead and we'll go forward. All right, so we're at max thrust here. All right, good. Let's see what our speed is. So we're doing uh, 22, uh, about 22 knots. Not bad. That's pretty good for a vessel like this. I'm happy with that. So notice our flywheel RPS. I don't really care about that. What I care about is this, my clutch uh, RPS. Notice it's a little bit dancy, so what we'll do here is we're going to keep at and we'll make it a 0.5. And look at that. Cut it down. We've cut our speed down, I bet, too. We're probably a little slower. No, actually, we're doing better. Probably losing less energy, but notice that went down. So you notice how... So this is how I tune PIDs. Like, people will get graphs and everything else. I look at dials, and you can visually see what it's doing. This makes sense, right? You have your piston is surging, because at some point, one of the pistons is receiving power, pushing it down. And when the steam is pushing on it, and then it, there's a point where there's no push anymore. It's just doing a, reser a return cycle. Now, you can get them lined up so you have less surge with more pistons. Not interested uh, right now. And so you can visually see what that's doing. Then you multiply it times 27 times. Of course, it's going to be more accentuated. And then what we're doing is we're trying to cut it down even more. So, like, if I go back to a 1, you notice it's higher and dancing more. So we could probably do something with the D-value to get that even more precise, but I don't need it more precise. That's kind of, I always talk about that. It's like, do I need it? Let's do this really quick. You know, do I need it more precise? No. You know, there's a point where you're just, you're getting super precise for the sake of getting super precise, right? You know, it's like when you pull in your driveway or your garage, do you need to be within one micrometer of... Um, or nanometer, or whatever it is, nanometer of where you should be in your garage. No. Do you need to be within, you know, 10 centimeters? Yeah. You know, so it's it's practical. You know, I want to be practical. I don't need to be ultra precise. That's like when people be like, oh, I got your, I got your uh, module engine to be exactly right on the money. Great. You know, I've never driven an engine in my life that was that accurate, so I don't really need it that accurate. All right, so let's see where we're at here. All right, so we are losing power. That's something that can happen. I need to fix that. So we're, the pistons are starting to work against each other. So what, I'm, what I might do is this. I was kind of thinking this. I'm not a huge fan of these large pistons in this ship. I might, um, what I'm going to do here is, let's see. Let's play with the pistons a little bit. We can cut some surging out with doing this, too. I want to try this. This was a thought I had. These look a little gangly. Let's see the weights on these. Uh, 120. So these are really heavy. 12. So 10 of these pistons is worth one of the large one mass-wise. Let's play with this. I want to try seeing what going to smaller pistons would look like for a couple of reasons. One, we're out of space. We're hitting the ceiling, and these are glitching through the floor, which I don't like. So let's save this, and I want to I want to try putting in smaller pistons. I think it will look cooler when you go in the engine room. Uh, come on, man. Symmetry. There we go. I think it'll look cooler, and we should be able to get a better pattern going to get them to not surge. So let's go. Let's see. How do I want to set this up? Um, it's not a big deal here. Let's just let's not overthink it. No, let's just do it. Right. Let's go here, for example. Let's see where we can line these up right. So. Let's start putting some pistons in, and we'll see where we get. Because I think it's going to be cooler with these smaller pistons. And what we have? Steam out. That should be on that side. So this needs to be reversed. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go down probably to... Let's just go to here. Now let's try some smaller pistons. I'm not wanting for power. I think I have more than enough power, so I kind of want to shrink this down a little bit. All right, good. So steam, make sure this is going the right direction here. Nope, that's steam out. Okay, I had it right the first time. So steam out is on the uh, outboard side. All right, steam out's on the outboard side. All right, so let's do... I like a six banger, personally. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. So let's start playing with these. 
So the offset is two, or is one. So it'll be one divided by we could, six. Let's try one divided by six. We're talking 0.16. I'm going to run a six banger. Actually, you know what? Let's let's run an eight banger. Let's try that. All right. Stand by. Let's run our six banger to start with. It'll be a little surge in here, but it won't be as bad. And then what's that? Let's do that and then I think the best way. Maybe I'll do an eight. I don't know, man. I'm trying to remember what my sixteen is at. What my six is at. I have my I have my six for my tutorial. I can't remember my numbers, so I'm just gonna do it fresh. It's not that you don't have to be that precise. You just have to be ballparking it. Let's go. Let's do this. What was this one? Um, three, four. Eighteen. Let's see how this runs, and then uh, if I'm having any issues, I can play with it after that. Look at this. Ah, uh, come on, man. Symmetry. Need like a voice command. Symmetry on. Symmetry off. Good.
There we go. All right. Check some chat. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yep. Uh, wings work really well as large rudders, and they uh, look correct, and they uh, work well. Yes, it does matter. Uh, the reason I'm fixing the rotation now is uh, the issue was the pistons were eventually slowing down because the up piston was causing was causing back pressure on the down piston. So you have to get the you have to get the alignment right. So you want to uh, you want to essentially divide it. So I just took uh, one. It goes to negative 0.5 and to positive 0.5, and I divided it by the number of pistons six. So I needed like around a 0.16 uh, offset. So a little bit offset, but as long as they're close, you're good. Uh, what was I doing here? So 0.5 on that. Okay. And yeah, once we're just waiting for piston RPM to start kicking. I want to go down there and look at them while I'm here. There we go. So there we go. Those are looking pretty good. So I like the smaller ones a little bit better, I think. Oh, I didn't hook the piston RPS up, so that's not going to work. Ah, crap, and a crap, and a crap. Yeah, I, I didn't hook the piston RPS up to the system, so it's not going to work without that. Needs that. All right. So the nice thing is with the diesel furnace, it heats up really quickly, so it's not, uh, not super-duper slow to heat up. How's it going, Blaze Beat? What's going on, kid? Yep, this this build challenge should be fun. You know, I usually go, uh, was it, land, sea, air? Not necessarily in that order, but uh, they're in that order, but they're not. I forget which one I started on. I forget what Alpha was. What was Alpha? I shall look up Alpha. Alpha was air. So it uh, goes air, land, sea. So. All right, are we up and running? Uh, I didn't hook it up to the dial. Ugh. Frustration. Frustration. Luckily, like I said, that uh, that diesel, uh, the diesel furnace heats up very quickly, so it's not like I have to wait around all day. So I'm going to limit it to coal or diesel furnaces as well. Most likely. You're not going to be able to effectively run elect electrical without doing some sort of glitch. And I don't want to have to hunt through everybody's builds for glitches. You know, some people have already kind of talked about doing infinite glitches. I'm like, nope, no infinite glitches. All right, let's see. Now we're actually, hopefully everything's hooked up here, so... Let's check, uh, make sure that all the infant electrics fine. Inch okay, I want to make sure vehicle damage is on. There we go. All right, so we're up and running now. All right, so this presently is less powerful than the big pistons. That's fine. We kind of expect that. Let's start going forward. So maybe I'll go to an eight banger. You know, this, this operates a little bit more like a ship this size, too, but I want it to be able to hold some weight, so. Now, what's my speed now? Yeah, that's too slow. I'd say, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 knots, I'm happy. You know, I like my ships to be realistic. All right, so that's fine. Let's go pull it back. So let's add more pistons. Make sure these are the correct way. All right, steam out's good.
Jesus, come on, hit the right, my hands are on the right part of the keyboard, it's always a pain. Alright, so those are eight bangers, let's go through... All right, so 12 fives we need on this, so. That's fine, that's fine. So five. Twenty five on this one. Yeah, I'll have to look at the weight. Um, it's each one of those units is one tenth of the medium, so three it was three hundred and sixty for the three of them. Uh, these are eight uh, times twelve, so it'll be eighty ninety six. So quite a bit, two something change. Just waiting for it. There it goes. Coming up now. So I could gear it up um, to get more speed. I just want to make sure I had enough power. So we're pretty good now. So we're not going to get more speed necessarily with adding those extra, but we're going to get more power. And so then I'll be able to gear it up to get more um, speed. All right, let's play with this p-value too. So you notice we have almost no oscillation. So I want to increase this p-value now to try to get a little bit at least. Because that's going to give me more power. So I'm trying to get a little oscillation here. See, and now I'm getting oscillation. Right. Go down to five. Let's try one. Let's see, I'm trying to check my numbers here. So they're fighting each other for some reason now. So I might not be powerful enough now because I'm really struggling to get these, like I'm really slowing these down. They're down to about a quarter of the speed of last time. So let's see. Let's make them 10. Let's go to a 10. Let's see where we can get with that. What do we got? Two more. Okay, let's see. Cut that. Go one. Let's take you, sir. Come on, man. Give me what I want here. Oh, come on. Jesus, come on. Give me it. Urgh. What are you doing? Why is that looking 
Okay, do those those never get hooked up before? What? I didn't hook this side up. All right, whatever. We're gonna go to ten anyway. I didn't hook up all the pipes. Apparently, I had the symmetry off for a second there, so as usual. Oh my God, dude, this is being obnoxious to grab this thing. One, two, okay. And then let's grab you. So I got the Red Rebel this morning on Tarkov. That was very good. Uh, that was... Because the whole thing with the Red Rebel is it costs... Um, you know, you have to wait till level 15 to get the flea market where you can buy stuff from other players. And the Red Rebel is like... It can go between 3 and 5 million. And so if you don't get it at a good time, you can be paying millions more for it. So it's better to kind of get out there and get it than uh, to not. So let's see. Uh, let's get into symmetry. Let's. Oh my God. Let's try to orient myself. I'm upside down because the camera flicks every time I try to move. All right. Let's delete. Just getting frustrated here. Getting frustrated with the controls. There we go. All right. Let's go. And then this is going to be different than the other ones, so I need to take symmetry off, put it back on. All right. And this one, any effects. Let's check the outside here. That's good. That's good. Are you all good? You look good. I think you're good. Nope, right there. Screwed up. We need to fix that. And the water got uh, screwed up going back. The water return. That's not a big deal. We'll fix the water return here. That's good. Want to return. This needs to be fixed here. Right. Well, that looks good for now. Let's hopefully uh, get all these set up and work and run it. So I'm going to just individually do each one. So. So there should be a tenth off. With a gap. Eleven is probably better, but um start going on this. And so eleven is probably gonna be better, but um we'll see. An odd number, but um, this should be 30. I went the wrong way. What are you? Yeah, see, 11 is going to be better, but um, what's this? That is 20. That should be 10. Twenty, ten, and then that would be zero in the middle. So th if I make it eleven, we're just gonna work better. But hopefully this will be all right for now. And then uh, need be I'll add an eleventh uh, piston. Just try to get it a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, make sure that it's not jamming itself up. 
And then we need to gear up a little bit, so let's go ahead and symmetrize this before I lose my mind. There we go, symmetry. Now let's just go bang that out. Let's see what we can do here. Likely we're going to have enough torque. It's not going to be a problem, but we'll see. We might be low on torque with these smaller ones. All right, let me read here. Yeah, the smalls, I believe, are what, one-tenth? There's 120 to 12, I'm not sure. But definitely it's kind of cool getting in a steam a little bit. I haven't done anything steam in a while, so kind of getting people out of their comfort zones, get them to do something different. You know, I don't care if it's turbine or piston, that's fine for me, yeah. The old, I went to bed and then I went back to Stormarks. I, I went to bed this morning at like 5 in the morning because of Tarkov and I was like, almost couldn't get to sleep. I was just like, I'll get up. And I'm like, nope, go to sleep, go to sleep. You're gonna... What, why is this not going at all? Hopefully something's not screwed up. Okay, it's turning, it's just not reading. All right, they're turning. I, I must have moved the piston that was actually connected here. So whatever. Let's see. So that's eight knots. A little bit slower than I like. Flywheel RPS is only six. Right, I can't tell anything with. How the hell did that get disconnected? Is the question. Let's go to 11. Uh, we're out of here. Alright, so where's the middle one? So, one, two, three, four, five, right here. It's five. Steam out, that's correct, okay. There's five. Starting to run into probably power issues here. But I like the way these look better with having lots of them. So people are asking weight questions here. Let's see. So I had um, three mediums. That was 360. And now I have uh, 11. So we're talking 132. So still weighs, this weighs less than half of what uh, the other system weighed. But I'm not getting the power, so. I don't, you know, the other one was going too fast for me, so I'm happy to lose some power. But I just can't lose all the power that I needed or wanted. So Let's uh, cut this. Symmetry. Put in. Ah, I'm happy with like, like I said, uh, 15 knots would be perfect. Come on, man. Get the right pipe. Right, 
That is plumbed here. Let's fix this here. Check all the plumbing, make sure the plumbing looks good. I think we look pretty good there. Get the staging correct. Offset, offset. All right, so we should be able to go down to a tenth. The middle one is, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. That should be zero. All right, what are you? 10 off, 10. Tenth, 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 zero. You should be ten. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Okay, that's correct. Now we'll do copy and invert. Merge. All right, good. So let's try that. Now I need to actually hook my pistons up. And I keep forgetting to hook pistons up to my controller here, I think. So RPS goes here. RPS goes there. All right. Let's give this a run, see how it works. Let's check the old chat. All right, so this should be kind of cool getting us out there. Can't get super heavy stuff. Like I could transport some of my trucks. Like I could probably take some containers on this. Uh, it'd be cool. What I'd like to do is build a container truck. It'd be kind of fun to go, like say FJ, uh, load a container on a truck, drive it on there, and head across. You know, um, that'd be kind of neat. Especially seeing that uh, Sawyer South, I've talked about this before, it'd be really cool if they had one of those um, stationary workbenches here at every one of the docks, so you could spawn your crane and do the crane work. Uh, this one here, I'd have to leave a permanent crane or have to do a small vehicle, but what I could do is if I make a truck that could haul a container that can be loaded onto this, I can uh, sail across, load it on the, you know, drop it off on the beach, drive up, drop the container, grab a new container, and go back. That would be kind of fun. I like that. Oh, thank you, Daniel K. Yeah, I made that this morning. My buddy. City, my buddy. All right, so good. Look at that. Our piston RPS is back up. We're in good shape here. It looks like we're, we don't have the torque for uh, ultra speed. We'll see where we're at here. We're not going super fast here. We're doing eight knots again. Yeah, see, it's. I don't think we have the power. Yeah, I got my flywheel RPS up to eight. Wow. What is going on with this? That's dropping like crazy. Yeah, see this clutch needs to be locked out at like uh, one anyway. That needs to be clamped. It's starting to slow down, I don't know why. Yeah, it's pretty slow for me. I'd try to see how I can get some more power out of this. It's not terrible. Like, that's probably reasonably realistic, but, you know, try to get a little bit more speed. Definitely be nice to have a little more speed. Let's 
go down in there. I wish I had it so that I could uh, actually like crawl down there. I need to put in a staircase because it's trying to do this while it's moving. It can be a little bit of a pain. All right, so this is only moving at 0.07 RPS. So I'm like giving it too much back pressure, too much resistance. And so that's getting us up to, you know, six. The mediums were definitely, the mediums are having no problem. So I really don't want to go back to the mediums though. I'm gonna probably have to, I, I can't. I'd have to add a ton of these pistons to get the speed back up. And I like the small pistons. Let's see if there's a way to get this up sped up a little bit. I can't think of any because it, as I increase the RPS, it's just it's putting back pressure on that, and slowing them down. I'm having a torque problem, so I'm having to add more pistons to get torque. Like I really like the ca cascading piston effect. That really looks, see it's wave, does waveform pistons, which I really think is cool looking. But it's just, I'm not getting the speeds I'd want. See where my steam is at? What's the, uh, Tripper, what's the max pressure? That's it. I was just gonna ask you that. Here, you can you can walk. Tripper is the steam expert. Well, uh, you can walk me through um, getting the um, getting the uh, the steam expanded. Nine. All right. So what was that? Three. Let's uh, play with this really quick. So where's my controller? It's in here, right here. Uh, desire boiler temp. Let's go like this. Oh, get out of there, you devil. Let's go here. Let's play with this really quick. Uh, properties. Length on that badge on. Okay. Where the hell is the spawn area for this? Right there. I left it in the spawn area. Okay. Try this first as a simple solution, then we'll move up more complicated as necessary. I don't need it to be ultra, ultra efficient, I just need to work. Right. I'm gonna set a, a higher temp and get that boiler pressure up. So I found out that 0.055 is my p value that I, I can run as low to. Let's go. So we're at. Um, we're at 115, let's go 115 to start with. See if we can't increase the temp. Valves, so what are you doing with the valves to get it to uh, run right? Because I could be putting too much back pressure on it with the way I'm doing the steam in and out. All right, building up pressure here. Let me get, try to see if I can get this piston RPS to rise. What we'll do is we'll do a full on test while we're driving. That's what I care about, or while we're moving. I'm gonna try with a temperature first. All right, so we're at 0.03 under load. All right, so that's not raising it, raising the temp. Let's let it build for a little while. All right, so that's not showing any change in the piston RPS increase in the uh, temperature range, let's see. I'm losing steam somewhere, steam pressure somewhere. 
Like, this pipe system is probably a mess. Alright, I'm up in pressure here. I meant to click that before that blow. You suck. Um... That sucks. I didn't mean it was trying to not blow it up. All right, let's see. One-way valves. One-way valves in the direction of the flow of steam. Okay. Yeah. Like, what do you mean by expanding the steam? That's what I want to know. I don't, don't give me jargon, I just need to know what's up. So, like, it's, it, yeah, so, let me see. make this over complicated. I might just go back to the, the big pistons. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a mess if I have to valve all this shit, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to put in the, the bigger pistons again. I just, I'm not interested in, like, I just don't want to go through all the valving and timing when I had a system that worked already. That's kind of my issue, is it's goddamn symmetry. Um, that's my issue, is it's like, I'm going to have to spend a ton of time valving and doing testing where I had a system with mediums that just worked. All right. So let's try something. What A medium weighs uh, 120. And then those are 300. Let's try something here. Oh, these are larger than I thought they were. <laughs> these are big. I was I was going to see if I could get one horizontal in here. Have you ever run uh, larges like this? I might try running these larges, see what these look like. Because that is, what's that mass-wise? That's pretty heavy. That's going to be 600. So this is actually lighter to run a large than it is to run the mediums. So let's try this. Because I think this would be kind of cool. I've yet to run larges. Let's play with these. And then this is going to allow me to have the least amount of screwing around and valving. Of course, these are backwards. Why wouldn't they be? Let's try this. I want to play with larges. All right. So this should be steam out. Steam out. Okay, good. So let's try this. I want to play with this. Gonna say if symmetry's not on, there's gonna be tears and crying, sadness on all the land. Okay. Let's play with this. And so are you valving into doing one way valves? Let's let's play with it a little bit too. So I'm gonna try to prevent any back pressure. So we'll go like this.
Try to make this look cool as well, so. Okay, that's good. And then I'll oh, single. Where are we at there? Perfect, okay. Okay. Play with this. All right. And I'll run a similar setup here. Why is you not giving me backwards? Okay, good. Screw that all up. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Of course. Oh, don't do that, you scum. Get that. Where are we going to? Here? There. Okay. Go up, up. Try to keep these running one direction here, essentially. I should have done that. Just get rid of it. Say so I've got symmetry going. I might as well just re-make the pipes here the way I want them. All right. Let's double check. Make sure these are both facing the correct direction. Out. Out. All right. Check the chat and I'll check this one out. I'll catch up on some of that chat. There's some technical stuff going on there. All right. So this one. These are going to. It doesn't matter the offset on these. These are going to be zeros because they're, we're running single pistons. So let's give this a quick uh, run. See what it looks like. Uh, not yet, because I didn't hook up the RPS, which is the bane of my existence. So that's going to there. That is going to there. RPS. What is this one for? Piston position. RPS. RPS. And I think that's good, right? Let's hook it up. Let's hopefully that's good. Let's check it. Is this one this one is 0.5 and now what the hell is this over here supposed to be i can't remember oh boiler boiler temperature okay i'll run it on my standard number all right let me go back and read Yeah, bring up the line pressure with pumps. That's one thing I was thinking of, is trying to keep that steam pressurized and push them one way. Yep, that makes sense. I 
<laughs> I got cap air and I get hit by the uh, landing craft. Yeah, I don't need super duper power because it's like I'm not, uh, I'm trying to artificially, you know, like I had with the mediums, I was going 22 knots and I wanted to downgrade to 18. Why aren't you running? I, I keep forgetting to hook these gauges up. These aren't moving yet, so. Okay, it's just getting up to temperature now, I think. Dude, what are you doing, man? Okay, steam pressure's building. I assume these just take a while to get moving because they're big and heavy, right? You have a lot of mass to push. Alright. What's the story with this? Why aren't these moving? I do something silly. We're building pressure. We got a pop here. Pressure is coming up. Yeah, the pressure is coming up because I'm not wasting any of the pistons. I have the uh, I have damage off, so it shouldn't pop. But it's gonna. Uh, so I have the pressure. Something's up. Something screwed up here. It's not running. So I already I shut damage off. It's not gonna pop. So. Let's see what the hell is going on here. No. All right, why are you being obnoxious, sir? Uh, or med madam? Steam out. Correct. Steam's coming up here. It's T-piecing out to one-way valves to, to stop the back pressure. It's coming in here. It's going down to the bottom node. It's going up to the top node on valves. These should be steam ins. Steam in. Steam in. Okay. That is fine. These are also steam ins. Steam in. Alright. It has a way for the pressure to escape. Steam outs. Valves are going the correct directions. Both ways. Coming back to the return. Why isn't this working? Thoughts? It shouldn't matter though, because they're not, they're going to separate engines, right? Or is it because of the same steam feed they need to be opposite? Because they're not fighting each other because they're not on the same drive shaft. I can see the steam fighting one another, but not the pistons themselves. And I want them both in their power, it doesn't matter if they're on their, both in their power stroke. I, I want them, yeah, I want the engines synced, so. I'll try it, but it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me just because it's the, um, oh, the both valves are closed. Copy. That makes sense on the zero position. Uh, let's try this really quick. Because the, uh, the, the surge protection system is going to prevent them from the surge protector is going to prevent them from, uh, you know, essentially giving no, uh, doing any surge in any way. So let's see. Uh, yeah, let's go down there and see. Yeah, so I can see it doesn't want to start if the valves are closed. So just open to crack these valves, see if they'll start to pump through. Now pressurizing now. There we go. Okay, yep. Valves are closed. Yep, makes sense to me. So they can be at the same value, they just need to have the valves open. I like that, that's kind of cool. It is clipping through my gearboxes, which is gonna drive me nuts, but I can fix that, so. I like that, I think that's cooler than the mediums. Yar, 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 okay. That, I think we're not gonna want for torque now. I think we're gonna be good. So that is reasonable, let's go, let's get moving here.
And then now it's just multiplication with the gearboxes to get it to where I want them. It still seems like this is low though. Like this, the piston RPS is slow, so I'm gonna have to, but I have to torque, so I have to gear it way up. All right, that's fine. So expecting the surgeon is gonna be worse, but I can fix that. All right, good. So let's get in there and gear it. All right. So it makes sense that a bigger piston is gonna have a slower RPS and more torque. So let's go. I don't want this clipping anymore, so let's go like so. Let's go. So let's sit figure. Uh, let's see, I want to do. Let's see, 15 maybe RPS. So let's go 1, 2, 27, half 27. That's probably going to be close to where I want to be. Yeah, that's going to be close to where I want to be here. So let's play with this. Right, let's run that. And we definitely need blow off valves too for emergencies. All right, copy, copy. That makes sense. I am hosting the challenge. Uh, go ahead and look at the Discord down in the description. I'll put a Discord link in. The challenge is not starting until uh, Saturday uh, at 0000 Eastern. So when the challenge is announced, you'll get this announcement. So there you go, Alan. All right, so we are rocking and rolling here. Now yeah, let's get going here. There we go. So we should not want for torque. So there is, that's 30 knots. Good. Uh, let's try to get some of, take some of the surge out of here. So clutch should go down to 0 0.055 was fine. So like, let's look at the clutch here. So I'll go back to where I was. All right, so I had, a, I had a clutch value of one, right? All right, look at my clutch. It's rating seven, right? The clutch only goes from zero to one, so there's no point in this being that high. If I go to a 0.5, let's see where the clutch goes. Three, still too high, 0.25. Now we're down to a 1.8. Keep going down. Point uh, one. And now we're at point seven. That's too low. So there's point nine. So we'll do uh, point one six. And there we go. We're over. Let's go point one five. And there it gives me just over a clutch value of one. So that's probably where we want the clutch, is about a 0.15, and then I'll clamp it. So, the, you know, we expect this to be surgy because it's a single piston. So, there's, you know, it, it's essentially the way it's working is it's giving us push, nothing, 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 push, nothing, 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 push. You know, if it's multiple pistons, we have one that's going push, nothing, push, nothing, push, nothing, push. And the more we're just getting push, 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 push. You know, like uh, there was a cool video um, from Ryan F9. He's talking about different motorcycle engines. And they call single cylinder engines um, thumpers. And it's because it goes thump, 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 
with them. And the reason it's doing that is it is a four-stroke engine, so it's bang, nothing, 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 bang, nothing, nothing, nothing. So it goes thump, thump, thump. And then you have, uh, you know, two cylinders, which are bump, 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 bump. Uh, or like a Harley is poke, take, toe, poke, take, toe, poke, take, toe. And then they call four cylinders screamers because you have four cylinders, you have four strokes. So it's power, 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 power. Each, there's always one piston on the power stroke, so your exhaust note is always power, 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 power. You know, I wish he had done a six cylinder. My bike's a six cylinder. You know, the benefit of the six cylinder is they're uh, constantly in balance. Oh, we're having problems here. I'm having back pressure issues or something. We're already starting to have issues. Yeah. God damn it. I hate it when this happens. Especially, it's going to be a pain with having single cylinders, maybe. Let's see what's up. Am I not producing enough steam for this? No, pressure's good. I don't know what's gumming it up because it um, it's a single piston. So how's it getting gummed up with a single piston? So let's let's do pumps. It looks like the outflow is lower than the inflow. Let's see if I can't put some uh, boost pumps on this. <laughs> yeah, the coal truck will tip over. The coal truck tips it over. It's too heavy with coal in it. Um, so let's go boost pump this. Do it right here. And then I'm going to boost the outflows. Let's go um, just for precaution. Oh, come on, damn. Go for precautionary reasons. We'll do this. Give me this, please. Just come back. Uh, there we go. All right. Yeah, and then we'll boost out here. So hopefully we keep everything rocking and rolling and moving and not being a pain in the ass. So let's do that and then let's change some things up here. There's my p-value. Here's my p-value. So that's 0.15 now. Hopefully that uh, alleviates some of the issues uh, with flow because it seems like we're getting back pressure and it's not behaving itself. Yeah, that uh, full the full uh, coal truck is way too heavy. Yeah, I think the pump's going to help try to keep it from clogging. I think it's getting a little back pressure. That'll keep the things flowing in the right direction. Now, of course, IRLs, you know, you have steam. You don't need... <laughs> You know, it shouldn't need a pump in there. It's pushing at pretty high bar, but um, again, we're not in the real world, so it's like you know, you could complain about it. Just like do what you need to do in game to make it work. So there we go.
Alright, let's see if it slows down now. We'll just give it a little bit of a ride here. I'm gonna go grab a drink really quick. Throw you guys a quick ad, and I'm gonna just go grab a drink real quick. Alright, I am back. Let's see. Alright, so it's having issues. God damn it. Uh, what is it doing now? What is this stupid thing doing now? That's why I do diesel. What are you doing there, Steam Piston? That one's moving, this one's jammed up. Steam. <laughs> All right, uh, let's make this symmetrical. There's a center line there.
run it like this for now, see if it works, see if we have to do something on the back flow. I, I don't want to do too much at once, that way I don't know what's going on. So. Silly steam. This would be cool too, is I wanted a vehicle I could land a helicopter on as well, so should be able to do that. The other thing I could do, which I'm not thrilled about, but I like running my engines independently or my props independently. Well, I can still run the props independently uh, through the RPS controller, but uh, I'd, so what I could do is I could link the piston together and essentially run to both screws, but I really don't want to. I want to run them independently, one, one on each other. Are you starting or what the hell's going on here? Something. I put it in the wrong friggin' node. Put this in the wrong node. This is supposed to go over here. There we go. That'll be why. Eventually I'll figure out what I'm doing. There we go, it's running now. Let's just get rid of the smoke. So they were not symmetrical, so I wonder if it was causing problems. The other thing that could be is steam outflows, having a problem. And so I gotta try to get it where they're not teeing too much. Getting ready to move there, guy. There we go. All right. I want to put a desal plant on here for funsies as well. All right, so speed is good. Let's see how long before this sucker just strides to annoy me. Uh, so just noting the time. So hopefully they get an even flow right now. And they're not getting any back pressure. Oh yeah, you ate. So he's here because he ate, so now he wants to lay and have a nap. You ready for a nap? Let me come sit and have a nap. Yeah, you gonna have a nap? Look at this boy. Look at this child. Oh, there he is. You have your nap? Alright, so, yeah. Let's see if this misbehaves itself soon. Hopefully it doesn't. So I haven't gotten into stability yet or anything yet, just because I want to see what the hell this does. I like the I like them laying down like this, and I like them uh, behaving themselves. And then this is a little bit. This isn't really cleaning itself up as well as I would like. So I need to put in a. Uh, I need to fix some stuff here. The reason this isn't. Uh, fixing the surge is uh, I have it set to 19. I need to set it to its maximum RPS, which is about 13. I, I can already tell they're slowing down, being obnoxious. Pretty soon I'm going to change this over. Pretty soon I'm going to just change this over so that it's um, build whatever drive system you want. I'm already getting sick of the steam. Yeah, I'm already getting sick of the steam. Yeah, all right. Uh, challenge is going to be any drive system you want. I'm not doing steam. I've had it with steam. I don't want to listen to it. It's a pain in the ass. So. All right, 
people can put in Steam if they want, but I'm not making people put in Steam. I'm already sick of the Steam myself. Bingo. See you later. Put in a proper diesel system like it should be. Proper engine right there. go. Go. I like the cooling system there. All right, put some proper engines in here instead of all that nonsense. All right, good. Um, stacks. We're not stacks. 
Integrated stacks, right. How does this look? Doesn't matter right now, but stacks, I'm, I'll figure out the stacks a little bit later. Proper engines here. Let's do some micro farm and get that banged out. So we're out here. I don't know if the chat stalled or not. If you guys just put in a, somebody sent a message just so that I know it didn't stall. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Working, working. Yeah, but I had the the stream crashed yesterday, so I just want to make sure it wasn't crashing again. Air fuel. Crap, can go somewhere else. Help. Vehicle. All right, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's do function. All right, so function. Uh, let's see. WS2, that's going to be there.
Alright, so we're making good progress here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not enjoying working on the Steam. It's being a pain in the ass. I'm not interested in it. And it's not something I would use on this boat. So, for the challenge, if you want to build with Steam, you can. But I'm not going to restrict it to Steam. Because I, I kind of figure there's a lot of people who will not want to do Steam. And will not like Steam. And will end up uh, not wanting to use their build after the challenge is done. Which I don't want. So, if somebody wants to build with Steam, they can do that. But I'm not going to force anybody to build with Steam. Yeah, it's like I, I hate the sound of it. Like that constant like jet engine sound I'm not interested in. It's a pain in the ass to get it to run right and it doesn't have any benefit really for me, so it does not interest me. I have to change this up. I'm gonna probably put a flywheel on here. We'll see if I want a flywheel or not. Flip it first. There we go. All right, and then this is just going to re reroute this for now for the stacks. Let's actually, just do this. Stuff, so we'll go like that. All right. Double check that out. It is okay. Good. on these engines. Let's go ahead and save this. Grab any vehicle that I have, essentially. Grab the stoic stuff. Trying to see if I can get this built in record time. Try to accelerate my microcontroller stuff here. So cooling.
That looks good so far. I think we're good there. All right, good. That's done. Alternator. Your clutch. Okay, we'll make our clutch set up. So we'll do a boat clutch on here. So that's what we have here is a boat. Alright, All right, so we want to go in here to. Um, I need to run an absolute value on this. So let's go there, and then I need a function. Do a regular function. All right, so this is going to give me my uh, RPS negative and positive. This is going to give me just a positive RPS value on that. And then we're going to want to go in here. So if this uh, throttle set is less than zero, we want to go into reverse. I'm going to go ahead and go like this because we're going to need more space. I'll put reverse, okay. There's reverse. All right, pretty simple there. Uh, starter, we need a starter, so let's see. Boolean. So if master power is on or systems power is on, X and, there's and, 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 and there. There's RPS up there, okay. Going into there, Z. Okay, X and Z on that. Yeah. Just, it's going to be tough. Like, you know, one of the reasons I was kind of moving away from Steam, too, is, again, if people want to build Steam, great. Um, that's awesome. But it's like, you know, some of these uh, landing craft, you want to build a really tiny landing craft, it's pretty impossible to do that. You know, so it really, it's super limiting. I would absolutely love it if the devs would give us some smaller steam parts. That would be really awesome because it would um, it would make it so that we could do some of that stuff compact. But they're just too huge, and it's like they're obnoxious right now, and they're huge. And so it's like, all right, so we have the starter done. Reverse uh, is there. I need to work on the clutch. So simple auto clutch. Uh, one, enabled, one. So the clutch is going to go here, and then we need a couple conditions. So I need a bool. So if it's, um, that's fine. Not. Go to the down counter. All right, so conditions here is if RPS...
And if this, okay. All right, so we'll do a pull here. So if the RPS is greater than, let's see, what do I want for a set number here? All right, if RPS is greater than, let's see. Five. And if this is greater than. I do zero is fine. No, that's not going to work. Um. The absolute is greater than zero, so this needs to be the absolute. There we go. Okay, that's good there. There's a clutch. There's all the clutch stuff there. All right, and then for starter, I want this to trigger that. Alternator can be plugged in. All right, so I think we're pretty good here. Let's update that. Let's copy this. Uh, not yet. Let's do this. We have everything plugged in. We do. Okay, I think we do. Let's just add this here for now. Uh, composite, output, panel. All right, that's good. And then we have that, and then this will go, in this case, Helm is going to go to here for now. All right, let's go ahead and organize it. Uh, we'll do that for now. All right, and we'll copy it. All right, let's plug these in. Try it without a flywheel first. We'll see what I want to do later if I want to add it or not. All right, uh, let's hook these up to the engine and the helm. Four. All right, let's see if we can't run this up. Oh, I need fuel. Yeah, it's, that's the problem too. Is it just it, it's so space hungry for. Um, it's incredibly space hungry, and I don't want it overly space hungry. What are we at? Nine here and here. We're at nine. Okay. So let's go. That. Symmetry's on, thankfully. Yeah, I would love them to do a, like, a miniaturization pass on most things. Like, one of the things that they've done really well lately is, like, the physics sensor and stuff like that is awesome to be able to really cut down space. 
Uh, but they need to do it in a lot of like steam parts are absolutely enormous. And so it's like, you know, the piston, like you can use the small pistons, but you need an enormous boiler to put it in there and a condenser. And it's like, you can get away with like not having condensers and stuff, but it's like, it's just absolutely, everything's huge and it's like, and heavy. And then you have to worry about the things being far enough apart to not cause heat issues. And it's just, it's kind of obnoxious. So. run this. So it should be starter. Getting airflow. Did I end up getting fuel that actually came in? Yep, we got fuel. Okay, so it's something else if infinite fuel is not doing it. So. Should be air out, air out, fluid out, it's good. Let's see, what are you? That should be fluid in, fluid in. Okay, that's good there. All right, coming up here. And I, nope, that's air, air is correct. So air is coming down. Not that long of a run. Plus it's being pumped in. Check these. Out. Out. Let's run it smoky for now. Just make sure it's all blowing out. All right, that's connected. Exhaust pipes. Okay. Coolant's irrelevant to that. We're getting up to starter speed. Let's make sure the engine connections are done. Engine is plugged in. Engine is plugged in. Let's go through and check the micros. Let's see where we're at here. I should have checked the values of the air and fuel first, but um, oh, here idle and max RPS. I never set that. Be why um, idle should be let's say five max RPS. Let's do uh, I don't know, fifteen. That's probably why, is I never didn't put the idle in there, so it didn't know how to idle. That doesn't control anything anymore. All right, good. So let's go. I was gonna have to do this. I don't know why I didn't just do it originally, but um, check chat in a second. I'm just kind of working on uh, getting this ready. Why well, I didn't do that on this panel already? I don't know why I didn't do that. Up. I didn't hook RPS up. That's why. That would be why. So that should be fine, actually. So let's check them. I think they're fine without it. Yeah, point one eight should be a good number. Uh, I didn't hook RPS up. I thought I did. Yeah, that would be why. So it, it doesn't know what the RPS is, so it doesn't know how to uh, 
Command the RPS if it doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't have a proper set point. That'd be why. Okay. Nope, still fucked up. Okay. Really, huh? Just trying to make my life difficult today, aren't you? Just trying to make the life difficult. I haven't run 3x3s three in a while, so that 0.18 number is probably not going to work for it. Yeah, I haven't tuned up a 3x3 three three in a long time. I only run 3x3s three three on ships. Some people run them on trucks, you know, do whatever you like, but that's just weird to me. They're absolutely enormous for a truck. You know, like I was thinking of making like a land craft truck, which a land uh, ship truck, which would be kind of cool, but it, um, you know, that would be enormous. Three by three, you need to figure it's almost a meter, meter squared. Insanity. Like for a ship, it makes sense. Let's see. Probably somewhere else. My math screwed up. Something screwed up somewhere else because it's not that. All right, let's see where we're at here. Um, max RPS is 15, X times Z. All right, so it's gonna be two times 15. So when two is a one, it's gonna be 15 RPS. Y is the idle, which is five, Y. Z is the 15, that's fine. Okay, RPS is here. ABS of this, ABS of X, that's fine. Coming into the PID controller. P value, if it's less than that, reverse, that's all fine. This all looks good to me so far. Huh. Let's see what the hell this is doing and why it's screaming at me. Make sure everything's merged and everything's connected again. We'll check it again. Make sure I didn't plug something in the wrong way. RPS got disconnected again. I plugged it into battery. Awesome. That would be what it was, right there. Where the hell is it? RPS. All right, so it's me just not grabbing things correctly. There we go. All right, that would be it. So 0.18 is probably fine. It's just that I didn't have the RPS connected like six times. Yep, that's fine. Uh, ship's going well. Let me just check chat here. Yeah, I'm not building an Airbus 380. It doesn't interest me. If I was going to build an Airbus, I'd do a 340-600. There we go. I'm pressing up. It's just, I think, the okay, the clutch value is way too low. Look at that. Diesel's running beautifully. Fifth, 30 knots, right on the money. Perfect. Okay. Alright, uh, clutch values need to be changed. The clutch multiplier is off. Alright, yeah, clutch, 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 clutch. Let's do that. Try that out. Point one eight works fine. I should hard code that in there again. Still way too slow. Alright. So I'll hard code that in and I'll fix the clutch. And right here, back go back to the point one eight.
Still a little slow on the uh, clutch up for me. Oh, that's pretty good. A we'll kick to Arbor in reverse. I'm not going to play with that right now because this is way too slow a clutch still, so I need to fix the clutch. Maneuvering's not going to be any, any fun if I just do that. Why are you not going to reverse? Something's up with the reverse. We'll fix that. Ship's going well, Connor. I, uh, I'm not doing steam anymore. You can drive it on whatever you want. So it's, uh, it's actually moving properly now. So I was kind of annoyed with steam. It's just um, it's not giving me the desired results. And I don't like the sound of it and everything else. So I've just decided if you want to build steam, you can build steam. But um, you can build whatever you want for propulsion. I'm not going to do whatever you want for propulsion, but um, well, uh, I'll get into that later. But it's going to be, you can build steam if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, let's do you for now. That's that's in. Okay. Uh, let's see. What do I want to fix? Reverse is screwed up, so I need to fix reverse. Uh, because it's supposed to be here. Uh, nope, it isn't supposed to be there. Less than zero. I want you to uh, did I connect the reverses. I thought I did. Reverse, reverse, reverse. They're in. Okay. That should be working. This is less than zero. Let's go. Uh, point one. Yeah, point one's fine. Okay, let's update this. Let's increase the sensitivity on the helm a little bit. WS sticky. Oh yeah, that's way too low. Let's go 10. That would probably be why I'm having issues with this. There we go. That'll do it. Uh, you can use one by one. I just do it for the looks. They used to be, if you use the larger, if you use small gearbox before, they had a torque limit, so you'd break them. Uh, they took that out. And so uh, I just do it for looks. That's why I like have a three by three going a one by one. It's just for looks. All right, why are you not going in reverse there? Number two. Why is reverse not going in? Why is number two not going in reverse? All right, let's see. Axis four is negative one. That should be in reverse. What are you doing there, guy? Okay. See what the hell's going on here? Something's still up. Yeah. When they first came out, they would break, and it was annoying because, for example, if you had a helicopter, 
uh, you need a 3x3 gearbox. So, like, you would have a helicopter, and then you had this 3x3 gearbox sitting somewhere in the rotor assembly to try to fit a rotor on there, so it was gross. Um, you know, and then they finally, they realized that was a bad idea, and they made it so they're all the same. They're just cosmetic, so, you know. I put them in because they look more at the place, and then I even have, like, the reverses of standards uh, one by one. What the hell is wrong with this? Why this isn't going to reverse here? Make sure these are actually set to reverse. Yep. Yep, ratio on. Now, what the hell's going on here? Why are you not going to reverse? Okay, if this is less than zero, go in reverse. So I don't know if that's the issue or not. I have to check it. And that's it running ABS, so that's fine. Yeah. ABS should be running that fine. Let me check why. Okay, that's why it's clamping it too low. Idle, um, that's why. Okay. That's why it's doing it wrong. All right. So what we'll do here is this needs to go to a negative, um, negative 10, we'll say. Uh, we'll make it negative 15. We'll make it symmetrical. RPX max reverse, and then what we'll do is we'll clamp this in here. So absolute of X. And then this will be uh, five is the, uh, change you all up, you scum. Uh, let's do this, control C, B, bingo, bango, bango, bongo. All right, so that'll be the absolute of X. This will be That's fine. Okay. So this will go in there and then That's fine. We'll do it like this. Goes there and then it's going to go down to where the hell are we right there? Why did I just plug that into that's wrong now? RPS, okay. That goes there, and then this needs to go up here. There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna do a couple properties here to set the, I don't need two idle. And this will go here. pain to dress this up but whatever um so that's better that'll work now and then because that's an absolute pain to do it all over again i'm gonna just connect all the nodes again that'll be quicker and easier and less of a pain well, you just make one change here this is now four and then just hook all these up correctly this time. There we go. Battery I don't have yet. Alternators are outboards. Fuel. Air. Cooling pumps. Clutch. Reverse and starters. All right. This needs to go. Panel goes to helm and then engine goes to engine. All right. Spawn that, and this should work now. He is. Yep, I uh, I made that GIF earlier of the city blinking, so he blinks now. <laughs> Thought that's good. I worked too many hours on that, trying to find a way, because I was struggling with issues of the um, making the transparency correct on the GIF. All right, so let's throw uh, two in reverse now. 
So now two's in reverse. And we can do it we can do a handbrake turn. There we go. Nice. So it's nice and maneuverable and fast now. Yeah. I'm glad I got off of Steam. Steam is just I like Steam, but like I wanna do an old timey build. Like if I you know I'll make a Steam only challenge when it's like an old time build, you know. And it has to be a reasonable size ship, but I don't want people to have to build something large just to fit the Steam in. And, you know, if they want to build Steam, they can do it, but they don't have to. So. All right, let's see. Where are we at here? So this is running pretty well so far. Everything's running well now. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. What do I want to do next? Okay, so they're they're uh, stalling when they go into reverse. That's normal. Uh, what you need to do is for here for your clutch out. Uh, we're gonna grab a boolean, and we're gonna change this up so it's gonna be X or Y or Z or W, and then this is gonna be so we have um, if the starter is on, I want it to zero out the clutch. If um, what else the conditions? If the RPS is less than a certain value, so if the RPS is less than, in this case, we'll do uh, 2.75 clutch RPS zero. So we'll do 2.75. do is I'll go like this. Alright, so those are the two conditions. And then the last one is if I press the space bar, which is I believe 31, maybe? It's 30 or 31. I always screw it up. I think it's 31. I think 32 is occupied. It's going to be um, clutch RPS zero. And so hopefully this will zero out the clutch before it stalls the engine. So. All right, so that sets us all up. Let's just configure the helm, make sure that's set up. So trigger is going to be push. That's uh, zero. Ross, so that's kind of a good emergency thing. It will zero us out. And then I just want to verify that, that is correct. 31. 31's trigger. Yep. Yeah, I like Steam. But, like, part of my whole, you know, like, I uh, I think I showed you. I showed you my, uh, my like, old-timey Steam home ship. I really want to build a, here, let me save this real quick and I'll kind of uh, talk about some stuff. So I would really love to build a steam home ship. <laughs> Add it to my long list of crap to do. Uh, there's a cool build on the workshop now. It's like a tiny, tiny home ship. And so I think I showed you this tripper before. Um, like I started working on this little small steam ship. You know? And so I wanted to do like, if I'm going to do steam, I kind of want it to be old timey. And so I, I was building this kind of an old timey rescue boat. And so I like this. It's kind of, it's going to be period correct. It's going to have round gauges. It's not going to have a bunch of digital crap. It's going to kind of look, you know, the way I want it to look and old and wooden decking and everything else. And so, you know, I like steam. I just, um, I kind of personally, I want it to be like, this has kind of that shape of an old steamship. 
So I kind of want it thematically correct, and it's, you know, the one thing I like, too, is, like, these landing craft, there are some really small landing craft, and I'd like to see some people, you know, build some small landing craft would be cool. And so let me bring up the display capture so you guys can see. So, like, there are some small ones, like, something like this is cool, where, like, that truck is purposely not that heavy, and it's not that, um, the CG is not that high, that I'm hoping some people can get something small in here, like stuff like this. I'm building it large because I would ideally like to bring some of my larger craft across the water, and so... I'm not putting a bottom limit on the size. The issue is, like, say you want to build something like this, you could put a two-cylinder diesel in this and make this work. You know, probably not this small to carry that truck, but, you know, you could build something smallish like this to carry the truck and put a small diesel in. It's pretty much, it's going to be a nightmare trying to get uh, steam in there. So that pretty much makes it where it could be high frustration of people starting out building something small, realizing they're just not going to fit it and getting frustrated or like the two weeks turns into a nightmare like something this size you could put steam in if you wanted you know that would probably fit but it's um so i think you know making it so that if you want to put steam in you can if you want to put diesel in you can um that's going to make it so that it's it's a lot more approachable to people and so i'll probably do it where you can put it in what propulsion you want except for like glitches and that way, people can build whatever they like. Because the other fear I have is a lot of people, you know, like, for example, I don't like the sound of that roaring diesel furnace. That annoys me. And so it's like, if I build this um, landing craft I'm working on now, am I going to want to use this when I'm done? And the problem is, I don't want to listen to that sound. The likelihood that I use it later is less and less. So it's kind of, to me, it was kind of a choice that to force people into steam where you know even i'm not a huge fan of the sound of it uh, i think it's going to be make it not a great challenge where this is going to make it a little bit more open and people can kind of build whatever system they want so uh what did i need to do here i was just working on something here let me see what, what i was working on that got finished okay that's good so let's see if this stalls when i go in reverse because ideally what it should be doing is it should be zeroing the clutch out before the engine can stall. And that will prevent the engine from stalling. And that's like, you know, people are commenting about, you know, oh, your, um, you know, oh, your chassis, it stalls all the time. It's like, yeah, because you have to configure it, you know. It's your job to go in there and configure it, you know. it's um, That's kind of why I put the, all those uh, property numbers in there is for you to go in and configure that stuff. What happened here? Okay. Four is correct. What is all this? Less than two. RPS never got connected. That's why. So it never never applied the clutch because I didn't hook that up. So that would be why. So like, yeah. So if you get in that stall sound and you look at one of my panels, usually it's somewhere here. Uh, clutch RPS zero. So what's going to happen is at 2.1 RPS, the starter is going to cut out. So... If you press 6 to start the engine, it's going to keep the starter running till it hits 2.1. At 2 RPS, the engine is up and running. It's, it's taking care of itself. So at 2.1, you should have enough uh, compression. Essentially, that's what it's simulating. You should have enough compression to have the engine run. So the starter shuts off. The issue is this. When I shift it into reverse, my propeller is still moving one direction. That has a lot of momentum. Force equals mass times acceleration. So the propeller is a mass. It's still accelerating one direction. And so it has a force. And then that force is enough to slow the engine down below the compression ratio, below 2.1, and then stall. And so what should be happening is when it hits 2.75, at 2.75 it says, oh, crap, we're getting too slow. The engine's going to stall, so what it does is it zeroes the clutch so that the engine can keep running, and now the propeller is disconnected from the engine, and that will allow the propeller to stop itself, and then the engine will keep trying to re-clutch and slow that propeller down gradually, and then once it's stopped, it will clutch it up and spin it the other way. So that's why, like, you'll hear my truck sometimes when I slam the brakes, they stall. It's just I haven't edited that number yet, you know. A lot of my stuff, I still haven't got to it yet. Yeah, so like right there, you could hear it stalling. That's so like it stalled on me trying to move, 
that means that my initial clutch application is my initial RPS application is too low. And so what's happening, see, like I was talking about this before, if you use these wing segments, if you go back past 45 degrees, they don't do anything. So you need to limit these to 45 or else they will uh, not work anymore. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to try to do a handbrake turn. We're going to slam uh, starboard into reverse. So you'll see the propeller. Okay, just just had to restart the engine. So that number's still not low enough. And now, uh, so people have asked recently, especially, why do I have two gearboxes when I could use the second number as reverse? Notice how we're not, notice how we're able to turn in a 360 degrees in a circle here. That's because the RPS multiplication is the same. My engines are symmetrical. I can do 15 RPS in reverse, and I can do 15 RPS forward. If I did it the other way, I would lose that multiplication factor, and I would have a much slower reverse prop than I do a forward prop. So by doing two boxes, I have symmetrical power. I can do things like this. So if I'm going into a dock to dock, I'm going to bring up starboard. All right, I'm gonna start steering with my rudders, and we like look at the wind. We have barely a wind. Let's go 10% wind. We'll make it a little bit challenging here. 10, 11%. All right. So what side's the wind on here? I can't tell. It's probably too low a wind to be able to tell. Let's let's up it a little bit here. Oh my God! If I could learn how to play this game, would be great. Once I hit like 7,000 hours, I think we'll be good. I'll remember how to do anything. <laughs> See, this is my problem too, the rudders I was telling you about. So like, for example, let's let's do no rudders. Let's do all um, screws. So port's coming in reverse. All right, starboard's coming up. And I did put cats on there, but I need to probably uh, do exhaust deletion. So we're gonna come in on the windward side, which is, it looks like it's to the, to the west. And so I'm just walking it with with thrust. I'm not doing any um, I'm not doing any rudder at all. It's all thrust walking here. So like, look, my rudder is going to stay still. So I want to come up on. In this case, right, I want to move towards the dock. So I'm going to come up on port, just gently. All right. And now I'm going to come back on starboard because I want to turn towards the dock. There we go. And I'm going to tap up both of them. So now I'm angled in. And so I just want to come in on starboard. Port's going to go to zero. Something's up. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, I know what it is. All right. um, I know why this is having a problem here. Uh, let's, let's change this. The way I'm controlling these is not going to work for this. Um, mana, mana. Let's go. I don't know why I thought this was going to work right uh, if I didn't do that. Zero. Okay. So let's do this because this is always staying forward. That's why I was having issues. Uh, let's go threshold. Yeah, steam-only challenge would be cool at some point, but, like, I would probably do it kind of like the 1950s challenge where it was, like, you know, build a a ship that would look, you know, period correct on that. All right, so let's do this instead. ABS there. See, the thing that sucks is, like, doing it this way, I can easily put in drop-down boxes to adjust it. This, I have to go in the microcontroller, but it's not the end of the world. And then this needs to go to whatever is there. So right there. Okay, idle is there. That's fine. That needs to stay alive for now. Okay. And then this allows me to also do uh, thrust sinking. Because often what you'll do is you'll make it so that one throttle is uh, sinking both up. And so you don't have to, you, for example, you can just control your port thrust and it will control uh, port and starboard. So that once you get going. Ugh. Let me see. Move this stuff here. 
I start getting annoyed when things don't align. It just bothers my mind. But yeah. It would be cool to get us uh, definitely do something Steam, but it's just like, it has to be, I think it has to be the right thing. This, this one's going to drive me nuts right here. This here. <laughs> just so gross. That, that one little line's bugging the hell out of me. Here, let's go look. Yeah, I can't make it perfect. So, whatever. Um, but it is going to bug me. All right, so that is good like that. And then what I want is 31 is also going to go here, which, of course, that's a misaligned. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, my God. They're all misaligned. Come on. Align. Align. Or else I'm going to have an aneurysm. There we go. All right. So that's aligned up uh, now. So what's going to happen now is this is going to... So when we press the 2 key in this case... Uh, it's either going to count up or down on the up-down counter, and then that's going to go in the ABS. So that's going to be a little bit more uh, easy, easily configurable for me. Okay. There we go. That's the best I can do. Nope, it's not the best I can do. This is this is like the level of my madness of when I start getting into trying to make all my lines work correctly is it's like I have to like I'm looking at him like no 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 all up down lines like this this bothers me to no end <laughs> like that's fine but this here is like <laughs> that's really bugging the hell out of me right there like that is better oh that's gorgeous that's what we need that's the level of my madness all right so but the problem is every time I do that like what I try to do here this is what I should be doing all right this is what um, the problem is. I'm doing testing for for twin screws, but usually what I'll do is I'll make one panel, and I'll control both of them. Then when I'm like 99% sure I'm not going to screw in, screw with anything again, then I go ahead and copy it over, so that each engine has its individual panel. The reason I do this is I go from this to this panel. I did this with my with my uh, planes. Is if I have two engines, I have two panels. If I want a third engine, third panel fourth engine fourth panel and it makes it easy to add and subtract engines and I don't have to rewrite the panels like crazy and so like this could go to a third engine if I needed to you know so I have to hook all these back up but um, I'll check you out in a second I'm just rocking and rolling on this trying not to screw things up so what was that fuel 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 air nope. what was that coolant coolant try to make sure I don't Misconnect anything and have issues here. Clutch starters. I'm running two starters just to make sure it it uh, starts the three by three up. Sometimes they're a little bit finicky; they don't want to start up correctly. There's battery, and RPS needs to be connected, or it's going to scream at me. All right, and then I need to go in here, and this here is going from two to four because up down is controlling the starboard engine all right and then i need to go in here and then these now need to be instead of sticky they need to be sticky uh they need to be reset 100 percent so reset 100 percent and i'm probably gonna still stall up my engine so i get those numbers just right which isn't a big deal okay all right so like now Something's fucked up. Alrighty then. Let's screw it up here now. Hopefully not something too big of a, of a nuisance. Night two, one is gonna count up. That's counting down, that's zeroing, that's all good. Six is my starter, reverse is there. RPS. Right. Let's check this. So we're clamping the ABS of X is fine. Y is uh, idle of 5. Uh, max RPS is 15. Okay, good. That's all fine. This is fine. Point zero. That's going to be way too slow. That would be why. That's why that, it was counting up. It was working. It was just going super slow because I changed this.
So that's going to take 150 presses to get to max, so you just hold it down. That should fix it. There we go. Alright, bring in starboard in reverse. One of the reasons stalling too is uh, because my throttle is still too fast, so it's trying to jam it in too fast. So I need to slow the throttle down just a little bit. Alright, do a hand, uh, handbrake turn around there and start going forward. Alright, so I'm just going to do no rudder, all engines. So we're going to come in, I'm going to press the space bar to zero it. Alright, so I want to turn left and I want to get close to the dock. So because I want to do both, I want to come up on my starboard screw. That's going to bring me close to the dock and it's going to turn me towards port. So I'm just going to tap up gently my starboard screw. And so we're going to come up slow. Now you see we're both turning and we're going forward. So I'm starting to angle correctly, so I'm coming up on port now. There we go. And I still want to get closer to that dock. So I'm going to use more port and I'm going to come off starboard a little bit. And so now we're wiggling our way in there. Now I'm bringing the bow in by having more port than starboard. All right, now I want to bring port backwards and I want to bring starboard forwards. And as you can see, we're twisting. Now I want to start coming back on port. Up too fast again because my throttle is too fast. But uh, it would have been, it was coming going perfectly until that. And now I just want to twist. So I want to come back on starboard and I want to go up on port. All right, I want to zero up port and I'm just going to come back on starboard. And now I gently come up on port. Now my throttles are working too fast, so I can't get good control of this. And hit the space bar, and now we're docked. So that's docking with no rudder. So that's how you can do, and that's why I do asymmetrical thrust on my boat, is I can move sideways a little bit, I can twist us in, and I don't have to worry about the rudders. I, can, I still will use rudders. Rudders will just accentuate it, but the... Um, you can do it with just the screws. That's why I like having independent screws like that. I'll, I'll check chat in a second, guys. I'm just trying to get this kind of going. All right, so that is way too high. So let's go uh, 0.1. Let's do 0.0, oh, I don't know, 0.05. So we'll make it half. That still might be too much, but I don't want to be ultra, ultra slow with my handling. Alright, uh, 0.5. Alright, and then, so, let's change some numbers here, so, uh, currently, if we look at the numbers here, I should have a clutch application number here, um, RPS right here, RPS clutch in, so, this is clutching us in at 5, remember when I first took off from the dock and started stalling me, that's too low, let's go 7, so, let's add a couple RPS, that's gonna give us more torque, all right, and then here for clutch zero, let's go three. Three. All right, and let's spawn that. And let's see if we can get rid of that uh, restart noise. And let's see if I can be make this behave a little bit better. Now right, let's go forward a little bit. All right, so did a little restart there. All right, we're going to handbrake and just dock on the other side. So coming back on starboard. Going up on port. All right, and then if I add in rudder, you see we go even faster. So a little bit of rudder there. And then, so now, since I want to, let me keep the rudder out of this for now. The rudder really spun me too fast. So now I want to go more to the left here, so we're going to go just up on starboard. So we're just going to tap it up gently. Alright, now we want to start pushing the stern around, so I'm going to 
let this bow clear. We're gonna bring back port just a little bit so we don't hit. There we go, port comes back a little bit, nice. All right, now starboard is coming backwards. We're gonna zero it and go forward on port, rear on starboard. Still too fast. The clutch is coming in too fast, I think. I don't know. Yeah, see, it's still acting too fast for me, so I need to fix that. Yep, too fast. So let's just work with the uh, RPS. So let's go, let's go back on that number, but let's go here. Let's go down to, oh, I don't know, 02. So a little bit of tuning here. Just trying to get it, I just want it to behave the way I want it. Shouldn't be jumping on me, that's annoying. So let's go, um, I'll actually do it in the properties, it'll be quicker. So here, uh, clutch in, let's go back down to a five was fine. Five was fine, then let's go and let's just gently slow down the clutches a little bit. Clutch seems fast to me. So it's point one, let's go 05. 05. Let's see how it behaves now. I'll be in chat in a second, guys. I'm just trying to, trying to get this one thing kind of dusted, and then I'll be good to uh, move on from there. All right. So I'm going to slam on W and up, and we'll get going forward. There we go. I want this, to, I want this boat to feel like it has some mass. You know that's that's part of having slow clutch, slow trans, uh, slow throttles and stuff. Is it makes it feel like it has some mass. You know, if you if it's too fast, it doesn't feel like anything has mass in game. Like you could throw the the thrust full full on a boat, on a ship like this, and because it has so much mass, it would take a while. But in game, you don't really get that feeling. You know. Okay, that's insanity going reverse. There we go. It, that kicked in a reverse like crazy. But I was holding it a lot more than port, so. We'll come back on, I can't see to my left here, but. All right, we're gonna go back in. All right, and then I wanna start going forward on uh, starboard a little bit because I wanna get on that other side of the dock. There we go. And now I'm starting to come up on star on port again. All right, so I'm aiming at the dock. I'm just gently tapping down starboard. All right, now this time we can use we'll use a little rudder. So I'm going to come up on port. I want to go towards the dock. So up on port. So just port, pretty much now. Now I'm gently tapping in starboard. So we kind of go at a at an angle. I have more port than starboard, so we favor that. Um, we favor moving to the right. I'm going to come up on starboard hard. There we go. We're turning it. I'm going to come back on port. I hit here in a second if I don't hit the space bar. And now I'm gonna go some rudder and I'm just gonna come in and hit my, oh, we're actually good with just rudder. All right, so a nice dock in there. So a little bit of a bump, I uh, didn't hit the space bar fast enough, but uh, works pretty well, it's nice and maneuverable. So like if I wanted to go off this dock, I would give it a little bit of, I don't have to do any rudder, let's go no rudder. So I just wanna gently come up on starboard. So gently, gently, I'm just tapping it. We'll, hit, we'll press the space bar to zero them, and then I'll just gently tap it up. So it's coming up. It's just taking a while. All right, and now what I want to do is just a little bit of rudder, right rudder. That pushes the stern out. All right, now we'll zero it. And now I want to go a little bit left on the rudder. So look at the rudder, a little left. And now I want to back out on port. So that's going to pull the port out. So backing out on port. And you notice it's keeping us, this, it's not pulling our bow in too much. 
if I backed out with my starboard, it would pull that bow towards the dock. I don't want that. Now I'm going to straighten out the rudder. And you notice because I'm just pulling out with port, it's not allowing the, the bow to push up against the dock here. So I'm just running out on this screw. And that's keeping me from uh, getting slammed up against the dock there. You know, and then I want to go ahead and we want to turn out. So we'll go reverse on port and forward on starboard. All right, now I want to go up on port so that I don't hit the back on the dock. And we'll go forward on both. So just like, that's why I like doing asymmetrical thrust. You see, like, it's a lot cooler for maneuvering. You're not just trying to rudder in. You can really get in there and kind of play with it. So I'm going to check up a chat. I haven't been in there um, and chat too much. But this is running really nicely now. The only issue is you have a little dead zone because the way the system is working is it won't give me any power forward until I get up to the desired RPS because I, I'm essentially needing to rev the engine up to get there. Um, and I have a dead zone between uh, between five reverse and uh, what I should do is do a kick in earlier. So I know I'm talking nonsense, but I, I, I kind of know what I'm thinking in my head, so I'll figure it out in a second. Let me check the chat here. Yeah, there's some cool landing craft. That's why I like some of the small ones. So. Yeah, it would have been uh, it would have been tough with the uh, steam, but I you know, it could have been an interesting challenge. But it was tough. Oh, so he was holding on to the uh, menu here. Let me fix him so he's holding on to that helm menu. I don't want him to uh, don't want him to fall in the water. He'd hate that. Put him on the boat so he's not, um, I don't want him falling on the drinky poos. Problem is I can't move my camera now. Or <laughs> he's going to fall in the drink. Yep. A steam challenge would be cool for trains. I don't know anything about it, so it would be hard for me to make rules. I have literally not touched any of the steam stuff for trains. I rarely make any trains. Just check in the chat. KSP1, yeah, I haven't played KSP1 in a while. Let me see what my time is on KSP1. I had a lot of, uh, played a lot of KSP1. KSP2, I haven't really got into. They kind of screwed it with it too much. Or they're not there. You know, it's, it's behind. Oh, where the hell is my, why can't I search all my stuff? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Carbo Space Program 1, I have uh, 11, about 1,200 hours in. Nope, we're going to hit the shore here because I don't want City to fall off the boat. There he is. <laughs> That's less than ideal. <laughs> I should have hit Space Bar. That would have fixed everything. He would cause so much ruckus on a ship. <laughs> Put him back where he belongs. Yep. Uh, let's see, where is he? There he is. Move him. Sitting next to me like, what do you keep saying my name for, Father? Let's try to get him to hang off of this menu here. There we go. He's hanging off the menu. Yep, it's running pretty smooth now. It's um, nice and maneuverable. So, like, you know, that's why it looks like a, a friggin' white brick is, you know, I, I, for me, it's very important for the ship or the vehicle to perform properly, and it's starting to perform properly, and I'm happy with the per performance of it. One thing I might do is um, angle that bow down even more. Um, it's not bad, but I might 
like angle it more. I'm not I'm not sure if I want to do that. I play with it really quick. Where the hell's my cursor? There it is. But yeah, so it's starting to uh, it's starting to operate smoothly now, and I'm happy with the performance of it. So one thought I had is let's try something here. Let's save it. Always save it. Now let's cut in here. Right. Now let's try something. So it has to be there to get it. In. Yeah, the problem is this here. I don't want to screw with that. So let's go with that because the bow has extra buoyancy as it is. The bow is pretty buoyant. Yeah, it doesn't have much mass back there. It's really buoyant. So let's play with this. See if I can change it. I want to just be able to make sure this can beach properly. So. That is excessively long, I think, there. Yep, that's too excessively long, so that's not going to work. That I'm digging better. I'm liking that better, I think. Yeah, it performs now. That's the big part. That's the big thing. Make sure it floats properly. Yep, looks good. We'll go beach it really quick. See how it beaches. Let's uh. Can't throw the big truck on there. Let's throw my truck on there that we're gonna be using for the challenge anyway. I think that's kind of, uh, yeah, so that's one reason I made this truck kind of small. What, you know, use this one of the smaller trucks for it is, um, let's, let's save this really quick here. I don't have to rip that off later. It was this way people can build some smaller ones. I just wanted a bigger one for uh, my own uses, you know. And then I can also, like, land a helicopter or something on it if I need to. Where the hell? right there yeah. so like I'll, I'll run like what the what the test would be for the challenge so pretty much would be like spawn it let it sit here and then I'll get on I will walk around it kind of like look at its features look at you know what the interior looks like hopefully this ramp isn't going to hit the car truck whatever you want to call it Oh, so close. <laughs> so kind of walk around, check the interior, see what that looks like. Okay, yada, yada. Okay, we'll go in, start it up, and um, uh, 
All right, let's go forward. Oh, I did too much uh, rudder there. I went past 45. I just need to put a limiter in that rudder so it doesn't go past 45. But going to pretty much just uh, motor over, see how it behaves. You know, if it tips over, it tips over. If it doesn't, it's stable, you know. So not too much on that. You know, these would be for inland waterways. These wouldn't be going out in, like, really rough seas anyways. And then one reason I like having the space bar is press space bar. And it just, like, stops for me. I'll just gently go forward. And I like this new bow. All right, and we'll just kind of stop it there. Ramp's coming down. All right, and then the ramp works really well with that, uh, like the folding. Like, see there, it will automatically fold that end section out completely. Let's go down and hit, bingo. Jump in the truck. I forgot that the parking brake's there. And we drive off. Bingo. So that, I think, is kind of, uh, that's going to be what the focus of the challenge is like that. So. Yep, so that, I think that will be a cool challenge, and I think it's usable. Like, I, I hate making, I hate doing challenges where it's like, oh, you'll never use this build again, or nobody will want to use it. Like, you know, you personally may not want to use it again, but it's like, I wanted to have some utility. Like, this, I could see myself, like, using this in the career build series. It makes me want to finish it, makes me want to keep working on it. Like, it would be cool to transport a vehicle across the water and then go to a rescue, you know? And I'm going to have, like, a little bed in there. So this, like, I could see this as being as a cool little, you know, like, a few episodes of Career Build Series where I'm actually, like, I'm driving my my land vehicles across the land. Like, you know, instead of doing just a simple diesel delivery, like, one thing I was talking about is I think what would be cool is make a, like, a hook lift container truck and load it on here or even just load a container on here with, like, some small mover and then, uh, you know, this place here, it has no place to launch a land vehicle. So you can't, like, launch a crane to take stuff off your boat. So, for example, you would drive the truck off uh, with the container. And then you would come up here. You would go and grab your... You would go grab your container. You know, dump off the container you have, grab the new one. And then you would go back, you would go on the ship, and that would be a cool way. Like, JSI has no way to be able to, uh, yeah, JSI doesn't have a way to be able to launch a land vehicle to manage containers. So, again, you could have a hook lift truck that could go on and off of this, and then that gives it an actual purpose. And it would be fun to do, like, in a career game of, uh, of moving things around like that. So you would... Come back. Let's make sure we can de-beach. We should be able to. Hopefully this doesn't uh, hit this truck again. I don't know why I keep not pulling forward enough. Let me see. But this truck, like, you know, it seems seems small. I call it a mini truck. It's definitely not mini. It's, it's bigger than most, you know, pickup trucks. I'll check the chat in a second, guys. I'm just uh, kind of getting going here. All right, and then we'd be able to we'll make sure we can pull off of the beach here, which shouldn't be a problem. So we'll go in reverse. No problem. Yeah, and then we would go and, um, you know, drive back to, you know, uh, motor back to, to JSI. So that would be a really cool way of doing containers. So it's, it's kind of this, you know, I kind of like having this innovative way to do things a little bit differently. 
than you normally would do them. I think that's fun, and so. But, uh, yeah, so what are you guys thinking of this? I think this challenge would be cool. I'm just going to hit the bathroom really quick, guys, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I think this will be a cool challenge. It, um, yeah, it's it. Yeah, I want it to be something useful. You know, I think this will be useful. It'll be utilitarian. I want people to be, actually be able to go use their builds when they're done. It's not like, you know, build a build a steam tractor that has a in the shape of a dude. You know, and it's like, so you build one that looks like a guy. It's like, okay, well, when am I ever going to use this again? You know, if you have build a something like this i can see people using this and that's gonna be fun it'd be cool for people to actually use them in the world and do some containers and do some land vehicle stuff and you know move some military vehicles all that so i think that will be fun let me just check up a chat see where we're at here how many small trucks can i fit let's see that'll be a cool check if i put the real mini truck on there it fit lots Let's see. We'll cut you. I have I have a version saved. I just probably cut a microcontroller off the deck. But let's see. Where is the uh, we'll go? That way I can align on the uh, rail with the parking brake on. I think these have uh, two X grips on them, so they should be able to uh, stay on the deck pretty well. That looks like eight. Up the doors are gonna clip, but it would be eight, but the doors are gonna clip. So if the doors are shut, uh, you get eight on here, so. Let's see uh, what. Let's see. Let's see what I have. Um, I see weight wise. Like I could fit some reasonably large things on here as long as they're not ultra heavy because it just brings the center of gravity too high. I have fit a lot of these on. I could fit fit a millions billions of these on there. That's, this is my new truck that will fit on in the back of um, Night Owl. Okay, where am I? I keep clicking the wrong button there. Well, let's see. Um, let's try something. Can I get a trailer? Do I have a small trailer that will fit on here? No way, if, no way full, but this, that does not weigh. The problem is I need the ramp to be able to fold, so I need to go realistically back to here to get the ramp to fold up. And then do I have a small trailer? Ah, oh, goddamn it, I keep doing the wrong button. Bugging me. Uh, no way in hell that fits. Let's see what I have for a small trailer. I could probably fit one of these, uh, low, those dumps. But I have them all set up in, uh, maybe the coal. This one is heavy, man. So, like, you know, we were talking about uh, trying to transport coal. 
this trailer was designed and built so that it would be able to be picked up by a crane. So what the plan was, was you'd go to gold or you'd go do whatever and you'd be able to uh, hoist it up with a, it was actually built for coal and you would hoist it up with a crane that was on a rail car and it would lift it and then uh, put it over the rail car to dump it. So let me see, uh, if I ever click the right button, I'll be surprised. I probably have a couple cold uh, trailers that will work. Here, the lead. I could probably put just the lead on here. Maybe. Yep. So this will fit. I don't think I can do it with coal. We'll try. But there's a really good chance that says no, screw you. So Yeah, definitely this is going to hate this. Yep. That coal is just insanely heavy. Like, see how good the grip is on the tires? Nothing's attached. That's the tire grip keeping you on there. That's 100% tire grip keeping this vehicle on there. So let's try it without coal. Yep, that's the tire grip uh, of two keeping it on there. The truck is reasonably heavy. I don't know what the truck weighs, but it's reasonably heavy. You know, center of gravity wise, it's ugly. So we have to worry about container. Let's put a container on here. I'm curious what this is going to look like with, let's go back to one of them here. What's that, what's that truck weigh? It's pretty, the problem is the center of gravity gets really high. It's not, it's not that heavy. The trailer is, is heavy. The trailer is very heavy. Uh, yep, the trailer weighs more than the tractor does. Let's grab... Um, bah, 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 bah. See, let's try something. Let us try something here. I don't have any super light tractors. Like, I would love to do a single axle, a single screw tractor. The issue is this. The game doesn't like it. It tries to push the wheels into the ground. So you kind of need... Oh, my God. What am I doing, man? I keep clicking on the wrong things. My brain can't do two things at once right now. What's the Mac Pinnacle weigh? The Mac Pinnacle weighs a lot more than the road train tractor, apparently. What is this way? This ways I don't understand this. Get out of there. This weighs uh fifteen hundred and the Mac Pinnacle weighs uh fourteen hundred, okay. What the hell is going on here? Okay, yep, there it is. It's just it was covering it with the other one. Let's try something. I have problems here. Uh, I don't know. I think the Mac R is even heavier. So let's try something. Let me make sure it's not dropping into the world too. It might be dropping in. I don't think the 39. I think the 39P trailer is way too long. Uh, I think I have a pup trailer. Now let's look for pups. I think I have a pup. Here it is. Uh, container pup. The problem is they're together. Okay. Let's go like this to get rid of the back one. The kite. So. Okay. And that will give us just the lead. So here's the pup. So this would be able to handle one trail, one container. Okay. And then we'll grab. So they lighten the containers too. Because see, it is pretty big. It's All this stuff is pretty big. So it's like, this boat is not that large. Let's make sure it's sitting in the world properly. Okay. 
Uh, so it needs to come down. Part of the problem is it could be dropping in the world. So it needs to sit probably like that. There we go. It, does, it doesn't hate it as bad as before, but it still hates it. And it's just bringing the CG way too high, and it's going to roll it. Yeah. So you probably don't need that much bigger of a boat, wider and longer, to be able to handle that. But that doesn't like that at all, so... That's a good picture. Let's do that. <laughs> I like the look of that. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be hard putting the center of gravity that high. That's a lot of weight up high. But what you could do is, for example, let's do this. Let's try something here, really simple. Let's go just a uh, container. Let's just do a container to start with. But this probably wouldn't have to be scaled up all that much bigger to be able to uh, handle operating. There we go. So it, it handles a container fine. And then so what we could do is this. So this is my, oh, I want the whole thing. So I want this. This will handle a container, but I'm not gonna be able to hook it up uh, with the current orientation. So what I could probably do is keep this connected so you can use this to move containers and so what i do is load this on there uh and i would leave it attached so these this thing here this attaches to the uh back of the container then you detach this one connects to the front then you tow it like that this would probably work the issue is i don't think i can get it up and down the ramp but space wise this works so this could be a way to move containers with something already built the ramp's going to slam into it probably but Yeah, it's going to crush it. Uh, all I have to do is there's one number I can change. So I could, there we go. So actually, there's an interesting way I could probably make that work. So here, watch. So let's go out. All right, so let's try this. So let's raise it up. So once I get past, like, I think, uh, like two on the ramp here, it will auto close. Okay, so I have to stop it there. Okay. So I just need to do that to close the ramp when something's close. All right, and then that will keep us in. All right, so this would work. Uh, all I'd do is I would leave this part here connected to the back, and I would leave the front section and the truck connected. The issue, like I said, is I don't know if I can get this off the ramp. So let's try it. But this system works pretty well. And weight-wise, you know, part of the thing why this works better is the center of gravity is low. You know, having that container up on the truck, that's pretty high. This is, like, that really helps the center of gravity stay low. So we'll see how this turns. Yeah, see, this is turning nice and flat. That's not bad. So this would work as a system. I could do this. And so I could keep that truck attached to it. We have enough space and I could be moving containers like that. And then I'd probably want to rope the container to the uh, to the sh boat. So because if the container shifted all the way to one side, we'd probably have problems. So by just roping it so that it can't shift 100% one side or the other, we'll probably be fine with rollover.
come up on port so that we uh, kind of straighten out a little bit. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'd do bad weather or stock for career would be good. See if it works. There we go. And then probably take a little bit of the uh, bump off that, like that. Because this is going to be, the problem is this needs to be low, low down to the ground to work well uh, for its kind of its purpose. And this might not want to, this might not like it. So, because that angle is pretty steep. So what I could continue to do is uh, I could try to go a little bit lower on that. Um, I'm going to probably have to do it. So cut the angle down a little bit more because the the middle of the container would uh, low center and hit hit the ramp. So if I bring that ramp angle down some more, I might be able to get this to sit flatter. The other thing is I could probably go out to sea a little bit more. So let's go out a little bit. Uh, let's go. It's on, I guess. I think I just shut my engines off. There we go. Yeah, I shut my engines off. So, like, right there, leave it flat. And I come in a little bit. So let's go out and try to like completely uh, level the ramp out a little bit. So right there maybe. Let's see if I can't get that to touch and then leave it like that. Oh, that just rolled in the water too, the truck. So like right there, you see the bottom of this hits too early. So I either need to find a different spot or like stop it here. That's better, and that's a shorter, um, that's not as steep of a ramp, so that'll work. And then the ramp just needs to go down a little bit. It's not as steep now. There we go. And so that's a, a more reasonable approach angle like that. But this is hitting here, so the thought is I could continue it uh, back a little bit, um, bring this up higher, and then go back. That would let me get closer to the shore. What are you doing under here, guy? Now oh, it's got to float now. Didn't want to float until I started moving it. Now it wants to float. Sub, subnautic action here. Yep, that's a goner. That's not going to work. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so proof of concept works pretty well. So I think if I let me work on shaving that. So this should work for a bunch of things, which is kind of nice. That's why I erred on the side of larger. Is let's go ahead and pull up. And I'll take a break in a little bit here. Grab this. Get rid of all this uh, nonsense. And then I need to cut into 1x4s earlier. So let's cut into 1x4s up here. All right. And I'm worried about cutting too much buoyancy out, but I think we'll be all right. You know, I would recommend to people doing this, if you look at a lot of these, very flat square bottoms on them. That's kind of what they're designed to be like. You know, trying to do too shapely of a hull, it's just like, that's not the right application for this. It's going to cause problems. This gives you nice buoyancy of a nice big square, like bargy hull. You know, a lot of them don't have really um, super shapely hulls. They're pretty squared out.
and try that. So still floating well, no problems there. You know, most of the mass is in the back where it's in the stern where it should be. So that the um, you know the mass is going to go to the front, and then the heaviest portions of the vehicle are going to be in the in the middle. And then this should allow us to get closer to the beach. Yeah, I don't know if the booster's needed. The issue is going to be that if you... I think the, the booster's going to make it harder than it's going to help. And the reason is this. Putting the rocket motor in there is going to make it so that the boat is not very heavy. The reason why I could even haul what I'm hauling on this is the boat is very heavy and it's heavy down low. If you're putting in the um, if you put in the glitch it's going to make it so that it's um, the boat is so light that the truck is what's heavy and now you have your heaviest part at the highest part which is going to cause you problems. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a little bit flatter. I like that. I think this is going to work like this. So I don't think the booster is going to do anybody any favors, really. So I don't know if, I, if I'm going to allow it or not yet, but it's like, I don't, it wouldn't help my boat. It's going to raise the center of gravity up. It's going to make the boat lighter. Ideally, what I would like is to make the boat heavier. Now, you could do the booster up high and then put a lot of extra mass and cancel the mass out just to, drag the center of gravity of the boat down but as you can see this this isn't like a top heavy boat anyways this is like a barge essentially with a sup small superstructure and you could cut down superstructure if you're having uh, height problems but you know you kind of want the weight in the boat yeah so the ramp is much flatter now we get a better approach angle and um yeah, so that's going to be better. And, and plus, look at the section of the beach I picked. Like, that hits there. If I came over here, it wouldn't hit. Like, right there, we'd be almost flat. So, like, over here, we'd be flat. So, like, I could go over there and be flat. So, a lot of it's choice. But, um, you know, I'm not going to ding people points if I pick a bad spot on the beach. So, you know, I'd be like, okay, you know, I'm hitting here. But if I went over there, I'd be able to get right on. So... But this is definitely, I think this is usable and doable, and I think this is going to make for a good challenge. It's, um, you know, and I think there's some area for people to have some innovation, have some different designs, be unique. You know, you saw all those landing craft. Like, mine's a little bit on the larger side because I want to use it on career build series. I would love to do a tiny one that just holds, like, a mini truck for myself at some point. But, like, so a small one would be cool, too. I think you could totally make a small one work. So I think that is, um, I think that definitely going to be a cool challenge. So I hope you guys think it's that's going to work out. So I think it will. Uh, the plan is I'll get a rule set written up um, and have it out. Uh, it'll be Saturday, you know, at zero zero zero. Um, so it'll be midnight Saturday morning. That way Europe can start and everybody can start talking. When I get up on Saturday, I'll check uh, how the rules are going. We'll do the the standard two days of uh, of rule discussion, and if I need to make any changes, uh, two weeks is a starting plan. If people are really struggling, they can always um, ask for more time, and I'll consider that. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to work out well. All right, guys, I think I'm going to take a break here. I think we made some good progress here. I think uh, it seems like people are excited about the challenge. I think this will be a good challenge, and it'll be usable. Uh, probably do some Tarkov stream tonight when Monk gets on. Uh, if you want to check out the Career Build series, let me just bring that up really quick. Uh, career Build series. So, Career Build series is going well here. We had the uh, last episode was uh, Road Train. I went ahead and took the Road Train out to the uh, refinery. I picked up a bunch of jet fuel and diesel. I then transported that jet fuel over to the military base for money. We now have all the money we need. We have like 500 and something thousand dollars. So Triton is going to be coming the next Career Build Series episode. So uh, stay tuned for that. I uh, will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you in the next one.